Episode 4 of my playthrough of Stationeers, Planet Vulcan, Stationeer Difficulty, which is difficult. Focus today, Oxygen Production. First, I need to improve some things. Emptying of this room is just not fast enough. to be able to see what's going on in here. What? So I want to be able to measure what's going on in there. That's why I have this guy. And I need to pump it dry, that's why I need this guy. situation in there is well planetary atmosphere obviously Air tank low. dude yeah maybe I should have, <laughs> should have turned it on Damn, I can't do that from here? An oversight clearly. Evacuated. Good. All right. So now CO2 production. Was the outdoor temperature? I cannot see that from in here yet. But let's just assume that it's time again to cool things down. Temperature is 19 degrees. 19, 20. Uh -huh. So, but the intake here is just too slow. That doesn't fly. 
so we need some active vent there. I wonder, if I weld with the arc welder from in here, will that do some pollution? Do as in cause, but we cool people always say do, because then we don't have to think. As in idiocracy. <clears throat> I would assume nothing has happened, but I'm not sure. <laughs> well, maybe we should scrub one out. Huh? <laughs> so, uh, where is this? Temperature is still is 19 degrees. Hunger caution. And I have to take hunger of the caution. Beep, beep, beep. There. My oxygen hunger has been dealt with. There's actually... Temperature is still 19 degrees, am I doing it wrong? Is on, is on, is pumping. Why is the temperature not descending, man? Assumption. This thing is not yet cold enough, and there's some kind of traffic jam, heat wise. Therefore, we should experience the temperature to drop soon, and we see the temperature drop. Ah, yeah. Slowly but surely. However, we will give it the finger. Suck up into the room. Aha. Pressure, 72 kilopascals. 73 kilopascals. Let's rather stop this before it gets too warm in here. But the concept works. If you pump in with pressure using an active vent, we get much more throughput. And we need some atmosphere in here because we want to open that wall. What's with the conversion? Eighty percent CO two uh, or O two, I mean. Well, another concern is the drinking water that we have out there. Uh, you have to get that in here because I would just want to put the water bottle filler over here because I tested the water bottle filler indeed, indeed seems to suck the pipe dry that is connected to which is something that other devices cannot do because if I have a pump here then actually what am I saying but let's say I had a pump here that pipe would be empty that would be empty but what is on the other side of the pump and that's the concern we would have to have one of these pipes and then the water bottle filler this thing has its own pump so therefore we'd be wasting constantly like five liters or two liters of water I mean it would be a one-time waste because it never increases but still we can do that better so let's do that better though. insulated liquid pipe steel silica dude do we need to mine again need about 10 or so oh do all of them Temperature, 17 degrees. And since we only have to turn this on in short bursts, it even saves us electricity. Is there something in the pipe still? There is. Oh no, that's the room. World, pipe network. That's possibly relevant. I should keep that running for a bit longer each time. 
Also, uh, what capacity does our landing pad tank thing have? I believe it's a very low capacity, so if ever we get rich, uh, rich somehow, uh, we want to be able to uh, have more water. So let's increase that capacity. What's the name again? Uh, up, there it is. And Steel. Dude, this is annoying. Why do people always have to do that? Hey, I can annoy you with my music because I'm currently stoned. I don't care for that at all. And whatever you do, don't piss me off. <laughs> that's that's the parameter here, not the not don't smoke. <laughs> I'm not saying that. Um What was it again? Copper steel. And there was a tank too? Kit tank. Temperature. 15 degrees. That's cause for some new atmosphere to be put in here. 74. 75. Yeah, but soon it's gonna be morning. You can already see the sun quotation marks around it in the air with both hands, uh, eyebrows raised, mm. and then lowered, and then raised, and then lowered in a fast rhythm while grinning at the audience. So, um,. Yeah, we need to see that we get some cold in here before the sun is up and prevents us from cooling down and even heats it up. Uh, now I want to make this thing. It needs copper steel. Then we lay some pipe. <laughs> and um, before with that we want to drink some more. Begs the question, uh, is there still something in that pipe? There is something in that pipe still. I am not doing it right. This way I will lose the water that's in here. That's kind of counterproductive to what I'm trying to do right now. So let's put that up again. We have to first drink that empty. Okay, outside temperature. I mean, I like Enigma uh, and all that, but uh, Sandra. <laughs> but uh, it's it's like they have this run one rhythm, and they made 500 songs with it. You know. Seventeen point eight. I think we're no longer cooling. Yeah, we are still cooling now. Unfathomable. Okay, let's do some building then. Kit tank. Um, pipes, pipes, pipes. I have those too. Then let's go. Capacity. 46 liters and we have... 20 liters in there. Ah, gas storage. Yeah, weird enough, this thing is called gas storage. It stores gas and the other thing. So now we have 546 liters. 
500 liters increase. Nice. Oh, do we have to give this thing power? That's the data connection. I'm confused. <laughs> ah, yeah, I could imagine that the uh, that this is the main thing. Uh, I don't know really what's happening. We will try. We will see. Still flashing an error? Nope. On? Oh, no, I'm going to click it, yeah. Yeah, lots of devices to switch. There should be someone doing that for us, Mr. Computer Slave. You should have one of those, right? Well, we don't have iron. And we don't have order. Things in here are so chaotic still. So with that last ditch of iron that we still have, I suggest we make a locker, clean up a little and go mining and then let the games begin. Uh, that was not what I intended. We have no iron. Aha! Uh -huh. I didn't expect this at all. I mean, I prepared slightly for this video, but not that much. <laughs> Kinda awkward. Thriving. I mean, just we're just in a glass box on Vulcan, and they are thriving towards fruiting. Is there no fucking wind on this stupid planet? So this needs to be moved slightly to the right. That's better. I think we should put the ores in there because the ores kind of express our next moves, what we can do and what we can't do. So we always have a view on that. You know, like this is the whole situation. Da -da -da. That seems like a good idea. Oh, it is food that I crave. Enough of this. Don't want to waste all that. Oh, coal. We can't go on too large excursions currently because the amount of oxygen we have in here is pitiful. I get got some oxides, so we're not really fucked. But uh, of course, those are reserves. I don't want to use those if possible. That would be the greenhouse, I guess. Hmm. You know what? Uh, 
pressure. A bit low for the plants, I would assume. Eighteen degrees. Seventeen degrees. Getting too cold in here. Red knot. Pressure increasing. Temperature two. Well, it's day. Maybe I should go mining. Kilopascals, good oxygen, good CO2, temperature is fine. Okay. Now that's a larger station than before. And I wonder if the cooling system is still strong enough for this amount of sunlight that we're getting in here. If not, we will add another AC then. Or toss some more oxide. Of which we don't have too much, but... Maybe it's gonna be sufficient. Hey, what's this? Oh. Mining. We need everything. Ah, we need the uh, duct tape. Temperature high. Pressure critical. Dude. Right, my suit is leaking, therefore the depressurization is taking a bit longer than anticipated. Man. Dude, what the fuck's the problem? Did my lungs take damage from that? From that little bit? Motherfucker. They really need to work on their expressions, you know? I mean, the breathing and the coughing, very well done. But um, the screen needs to express, for example, when my body, myself, my lungs or whatever, is experiencing uh, a high heat instead of some computer voice telling me that. And also, by the way, telling me that even when I'm not wearing any spacesuit, you know. Um, instead, there should be some screen effects so that I can kind of feel that. Remember that we only have audio and video. That's all we get. We don't have a sense of balance. Uh, Or a sense of, uh, but even not, not even depth perception. I mean, I hope that 3D, I mean, th true 3D, will uh, eventually take over and will become the standard for all of these games. 
And yes, I'm aware I need hardware for that. It's not in the game, all right. Um, but uh, okay, currently that's not so. Then, uh, basically, basically, there's also no over brightness. It's also a thing that I want, want to try, and I have tried that actually. Uh, I so I used Photoshop and took an image of uh, of sun over some snowy plain, and then I lowered the brightness of everything very slightly but kept the sun's brightness at 100%. Guess what? The sun seemed like it was, I wouldn't say blinding, but you know, it, it kind of worked. So we don't really need HDR. Uh, this HDR stuff, that's, okay, there's actually some um, confusion of topics. Originally HDR, high dynamic range, at least my mind was uh, about uh, photography when you were trying to capture um, a vis visible range that is outside what the sensor can record. Or even, for, even more than that, uh, you were manipulating the image so that paths that would have to be much brighter uh, would just be normal white uh, and things that are not so very bright would also be white because they're just in a different region of the image. I mean, it sounds weird, but uh, I'm saying the image was kind of slightly a description of what was seen instead of being really what you see because either you would have only seen the sky clearly but the landscape would be almost dark or or vice versa but what you can do and i've done that and it's easy you can take um, a photo with a high exposure and low exposure or you know whatever the what's the blender i'm sorry i don't know the english word how wide open that is Anyway, so there was much light coming in, or little light coming in. And then I used Photoshop to mix them together. Which is, it's not so hard to do, once you know what to do. I mean, it's not like you need some advanced Photoshopping skills. You just need um, medium Photoshopping skills. Mm. My breathing, it is heavy. So HDR and photos, that would compress, that would sh allow me to show a very s uh, bright sky in a photo, but would also show me to simultaneously show uh, a dark part where the tree is casting a shadow on some grass and such, if I compose them correctly. That is, my, in my mind, the original meaning of HDR. Then, um, okay, I don't know the order of events, but eventually then computer stuff came along where, where they said HDR is when the screen switches to some higher output brightness, like when I use my remote to control my, my screen here, because my screen that I'm having here is actually a television, 49 inch, and if I stretch out my hand, I can touch it. That is why I also have this high field of view that some of you might have lamented. I don't know, I've heard that. Um, but to me it's just right because you know effective screen size that's what this is about when it comes about the selection of field of view anyway high dynamic range so if you turn uh, up the brightness of my LCD LED uh, uh, the LED light in the background uh, of that thing 80 degrees 80 degrees then uh, everything gets brighter and if I then just show everything on my screen software wise a bit darker then I, it kind of looks like it did before, kind of. Obviously now the blacks are less black because a simple LC, wait, LED, LCD? A simple LCD screen like mine uh, will not have true blacks there. And uh, also you will have less um, resolution when it comes to colors. But um, when you look here, to keep the needle in the cutting groove, to keep the needle in the cutting groove. To keep the needle in the cutting groove. But when you look at this uh, transition here between these two, if that would be stretched out further, then you would see steps. And uh, you would see steps even stronger when you do what I just said uh, to do, like uh, turn up the brightness and reduce the overall brightness then of what you're showing on screen so that the whitest thing that you show is still just bright gray. I mean, wh how do you really distinguish if something that is being shown to you is white or it's just bright gray? It's kind of a matter of taste and mostly a matter of uh, relations. So you can actually simulate HDR without having to switch to some kind of 24-bit stuff. Uh, right, I skipped a step. 
uh, this, these stair steps that you see, they shouldn't actually happen these days because uh, programs, even the real-time 3D stuff like this, should use dithering. Uh, dithering is actually not hard to do. You'd think that there would be a hard-to-do algorithm where you have to calculate, well, there was a pixel here, so let's not put a pixel there because we kind of expressed that brightness already. But some guy, I don't know who, came up with a concept of blue noise really blue like the color and noise like the noise as one word if you google that you'll find it and uh, when, when uh, that is a pre-calculated texture following a certain concept and you can do that yourself conceptually I mean it's not like it has to be this one texture no your texture only has to follow that one concept 80 degrees 80 degrees 80 degrees yeah um, and then all you have to do, let's say you have a dark gray. Let's say your output, uh, your output is supposed to have either black or white, nothing in between. And now you want to dither that. If you take blue noise and you have a dark gray, then all you have to do is you have to um, add the blue noise texture, the, you know, the brightness of that, because it's a black and white texture, I mean a grayscale texture. If you add that texture to your image that you have, and oh, the image that we have is just a dark gray overall, you know, and then you uh, do a near color um, uh, calculation, it's very simple, I mean, which color is closer, black or white? That's the color that you choose then. If you do that, that's it. Now you have it, your desert image. Now this sounds a bit simpler, uh, this sounds as if it's too simple, it cannot really be good, but it's actually better than Photoshop's dithering, if you just do that. I have done that, it uh, happens to be one of my uh, many tasks uh, at the office to do image calculations, software and all that, um, and it's super fast and so you can expect games these days to also employ a dithering if need be and so uh, these stair steps are easy to be dealt with and therefore HDR can also be easily simulated you don't need uh, 30 bits or whatever to do that properly all you need is a bright screen and someone who handles their software wisely now I, I touched the topic of field of view that's really a hot topic or was I mean, there were years when I thought, God damn it, these game developers, what the fuck's wrong with them? Okay, there are uh, thousands, if not millions, of man hours or person hours uh, dumped into. Where's my station there? Um, 80, 60. Uh, into making a game. And then some idiot asshole piece of dog shit pff, motherfucker uh, goes and uh, says, okay, but everything shall only be visible through a very narrow binocular like. Uh, uh, view and I don't know maybe that's something that Dean Hall also thought sometimes probably even in exactly these words because it really is such a stupid fucking thing and so well in his game here station years you can just uh, turn the fourth very high and very low easily no problem it works anyway uh, so the field of view it must not be too low see when someone is sitting on a couch and there's a television screen like mine for example 49 inches let's say 50 um, for sake of easy and um, then they're sitting far away from that then it will effectively be a small screen while the same screen for me is effectively a large screen because if I stretch out my hand I can touch it that's how close it is that's also how I program and do all my emailing and stuff uh, and, and why not you know it's something you can get used to it's, you know, it's a matter of layouting your screen and of course I have a 4K desktop. Uh, that sounds maybe outlandish a bit to some people still, but let me tell you, 4K, we have really arrived there. You can just go there and switch it on and enjoy the show. I mean, if your machine can take it, but it's, uh, we are in that age. It's not outlandish anymore. Get used to it. Um, so my screen, even though it is the same size than the one of the couch potato, is much larger, effectively. Now let's, uh, I, I described that in another video already, let's say you have, uh, let's say in your living room, your living room has been inputted into the computer as a 3D model. And now you're holding a screen in front of you that is showing you a rendering of your, of your living room from that, from that uh, model and it is aligned perfectly with with the world that you see around that. One second. Da -da, da -da, yep. 
then um, the, if you pr pull the screen closer, you have to increase the field of view of that rendering because else it is no longer aligned with the world that you see around to the left, right, and top and bottom of the screen. See, so there's some objective criterion to what the field of view should be. And objective, I'm not talking math here, or I don't know if there's some some uh, reason there on that front, but ultimately it's evolution. And if you have grown up over tens, tens of thousands of years, evolved for this field of view uh, that, we, uh, that we see the world in, then you can call that an objective criterion. And um, what I just uh, described, this experiment with the uh, rendering of your home uh, on the screen, that is then a, a scientific way, scientific-ish way, but close enough, to determine uh, that there's indeed a field of view that you want and how to design how to design that and so if the screen size is effectively larger which is whenever you pull the screen closer then you need a higher field of view period there's no way around that and so some game developers who lock that i mean to invest all that work and then but you can only, I mean, even Deus Ex uh, Human Revolution, wait, Mankind Divided, right, that was the newest one. Uh, even that still had a, had a too low uh, max field of view. Even that. And so I gave it a fucking thumbs down, because I am fed up with that, and I would do that to every game. Every game that gets, a, I mean, no matter how great a fucking game is, it gets a thumbs down from me on Steam if the field of view is too low. Let's talk a bit about uh, not game development but game design, things that could be done better. I've had some ideas, most of them can be found on my Steam account. Um, there are some things that can be improved there. For example, when uh, you quit a game and it asks you, hey, I want to save, but if I just save five seconds ago, then no, I don't want to, so don't ask me. And ideally, um, maybe you should then tell me how long it was, um, how long it since my previous save. And there's a game out there that did that actually, that is Bioshock Infinite. You know that with a great singing, with a great music. Um, a game that I actually don't like, but uh, because there was just too much of that stupid shooter bullshit in there, instead of telling a great story with uh, all that mood and shit. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't have a problem with shooters, I prefer shooter over story normally, but uh, I mean, like, game mechanics over story. Uh, though I like story, I mean, I've played Soma, so, through Soma, the 12 hour experience, you know, uh, tw two times already. It's, even though after one time I certainly knew it. It's just great. If you don't didn't play Soma yet, you should do that. It's kind of a walking simulator, but not like, oh, there's an island and you find the... the uh, there's some note that you can read and then you find another note uh, when you walk deeper into the island and that note builds upon what you found on the other note and if you stick the two notes together in your mind you will find that they are connected and then there's a story emerges that we wanted to convey to you in the form of a walking simulator but that's not the kind of walking simulator Soma is Oh, I'm listening to Soma FM, by the way, but that's a coincidence. <laughs> uh, game, story. Yeah, yeah, I prefer mechanics over storytelling normally. Um, but if uh, in, in Bioshock Infinite they should really have left out all that shooting and stuff, that was just... I thought, oh, that again. Of course there would now be the scene where suddenly everybody turns, everybody turns evil and turns against you so foreseeable, so unnecessary, and all of that also conveyed through a cutscene. Okay, okay, no, I'm not sure. Was it really a cutscene decision? Yeah, it was a cutscene, basically. As in, you hadn't, didn't have a choice that had to happen, and so forth. Yeah, not my thing. Oh, uh, well, uh, I'm jumping all, all, all across topics. Um, it's, it's, I realize that playing this stuff early in the morning is better because then I'm more awake. I'm more eager. I want to change the world. I want to change, I want to improve things. I want to do things. Yeah. 
So uh, a thing that I hope that will happen, and I hope that will Dean and his team will get their fair share of credit for that, is that in the future games, or like they currently employ by routinely uh, physics, where you like toss a barrel or shoot something that explodes and such, completely unnecessarily, but it contributes to the fun. See also Half-Life, where you toss, some, toss something on a piece of wood so it will lift something else up and then you can get through. Fun puzzle. Uh, will hopefully employ atmospherics. I mean, you're in a room, you shoot, it gets so hot, so you have to get out, you shouldn't shoot too much, the wall might catch on fire, so, and so forth, that stuff. Why not? Why not? Why the fuck not? Why the fuck not? Now, here, now you might think it is overwhelming calculation-wise, but it's not. It's really not. Because what they did, for example, here, is relatively simple. Relatively simple. You have this world box, you have that world box. You have a mixture in here, you have your mixture in there. Then you run half, uh, every half second um, a game tick uh, a comparison between the two and you can, and that's the most important part, you can run that on a di an extra thread. The breathing is really getting on my nerves. But I won't swallow the pill, it's too early. Um, well, threading, multi-threading, what are we talking about? Well. Let's say you have a computer that is doing some calculations and that computer is now 100% busy with that. Now you get a second computer, you put that next to the first one and you do calculations on that one too. That's two independent computers and they don't know of each other. Now you can link them with a cable and let them talk to each other. But obviously you have to consider that they are really independent machines so they so they asynchronous. For example, the one guy has this in their memory, the other has that in their memory, in its, its memory, and um, and that's kind of how you think of uh, programming in multi-threading. If you're in Java, for example, which is my favorite programming language, sorry, um, and then you just say, you know what, I, in addition to the main thread in which I just do this for loop, which I'm, where I'm just calculating some, some, some stuff and outputting it, I will just have a second thread, and both of these will work on the same task. Well, then you have this kind of scenario where you have two independent computers, which are working in a way that uh, you have to make sure that they are actually talking about the same thing, and that there are no race conditions. Race conditions are a very interesting topic. Uh, they are also something that makes programming uh, very complex because, I mean, com the concept of complexity itself is one that people easily overlook. Um, because complexity, even after decades of programming, uh, still I'm baffled sometimes at the complexity that can emerge from simple things. And then you're like, wait, wait this can happen and that can happen? And I have to consider that case and this case? Ugh. I should make some more steel. 50 coal. Oh, do we have enough iron for that? We do not. Should make some. Okay, that's the not back steel. Should make electrum. We need to make uh, that stuff. Uh, mm, this stuff. Um, but uh, in many situations, it's just simple. You say, uh, I want to synchronize this and that. I, I want to access this one field with the data. And when I do so, I synchronize on an object. And the other thread does the same whenever it accesses that, uh, that data. And then we'll be fine. That's all. That's already sufficient. In this simple scenario. Um, but multi-threading, which allows you then to just run the stuff like you had an additional computer if the hardware is good enough, but these days everybody has at least like four hardware threads available, simultaneous processing, uh, usually eight by hyper-threading or whatever the technology is called. Mm. So let's see, what do I have to do next? Mining is a great mindless activity, but now I obviously need to think again. Uh, 16 degrees. Interesting. Let's get some more heat in here. And we should see that if we get some CO2 and some planting stuff. Uh, CO2, uh, oxygen, I mean. Uh, a moment of silence.
Yeah, hydroponics tray. What does it take? 10 iron. That's a lot of iron. Is it? It is. Oh, which makes me realize possibly we have an emergency in our furnace. Is, is that open still? Yeah, it's open. You cannot see the nose of the valve from on the side, so it's at the top, so it's open, so there's no emergency. I thought it was closed and would then possibly cool down. What am I saying? This is not Europa. <laughs> ah, what to do next? What to do next? Do I make solder? Do I use the iron that is currently in the process of being smelted? No, I have to wait for that. Uh, solder. Let's make solder. And let's also make electro. Wrong. I need silver. Do I have enough silver? I do. All right. It's probably. Oh man, 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 man. Yeah. Dude, what the fuck? Good thing is late in the evening. If I'm seeing that correctly, so we will get our cooling soon. So the plants will. Creep towards seeding some more. Is this operational? It is. Is it doing something yet? Where is my measure or thingy? I think I dropped it. Forty-seven point three. Uh, 47.3, I'm expecting some reaction here, man. What? Temperature is increasing. How is that happening? Yeah, okay, we can't do anything about that. We have to live with whatever happens now. I have some reserve seeds, so that's not the problem. Uh, I wanted to make soda. I should have some reserve oxygen when I do that. And I realize we also need to put up a machine that can give us oxygen into a bottle. That will once again be super tedious at first. Uh, oxygen. Man, that little bit hurt the lungs so much. Oh man, we really have a problem there. Soda. Temperature of the thing is... 300. That's too low for what we're gonna do. Interestingly, it's cooling down. Wait, stop, stop. It's 126. This is actually not the right temperature for what I'm trying to do. We, should, we need to do that during the day. So let's build inside that. Someone told me a great idea, which they actually uh, made happen in this game. They uh, used the temperature differential between day and night, I think on this planet, but I'm not, don't, not sure to um, fill some rooms, so the air was moving from here to here to here to here in kind of a tunnel and they used uh, the um, uh, the turbines, not the ones that are out there, and not the ones that have these large wings like we know them from out there in the real world when they stand in the landscape, and my opinion about these is torn, um, but um, the ones that are flat, like a wall, like this, like this wall here. And so, just by day and night change, they were producing electricity because the air was being pumped through that, through, through these air tunnels, through the latency of all of that, you know? And that worked greatly, I think. Um, what did I want to do? We need to plant stuff. Let's do that as over here as possible, so we can use this space for building.
Boy, do we need iron? No, not that. Ah. Five. Last time it was four. We're getting better. So about our reserves. Coal. That I will keep on me for. It's incomplete. Temperature, 41 degrees. That's still too many degrees, man. What's happening? Yeah, it's a large station. Okay, that was not the wisest move to fill this entire station uh, with so much heat. I wonder if we will actually have a problem here. But that's what happens if you don't like automate stuff or make sure that they're on different networks and shit. I mean, it's still so cramped. We still have to deal with so much stuff to make it solid. And later, when it is solid, will I then bother to improve it? I hope so. Sometimes I do. What about the plants? Growing poorly towards seeding, but it is growing. Moderately well. Oh, what happened? The temperature? <sighs> I have to take a breather myself. Oh yeah, let's lock that stuff somewhere else. Huh. Tricky. Ah, right, sure, that would happen. Dude? I think you have a misunderstanding here as to the intention of myself. Do I still have my fucking helmet closed? Ah. Uh, wasting oxygen. Yeah, let's work on that front. Kid atmospherics. Uh, atmospherics. Needs, of course, iron, gold, copper. So, I should also put up another AC so we get some more oomph out of that in case we ever need it. And we need more wind turbines so we have some more general base power. Because I need this thing more often now. Not good. For which we will need more heavy cables. I think we have those somewhere. Don't think I used all of them. That would be weird. I'm pretty sure I didn't count them. Where are my heavy cables? They might though have burned up in one of the many accidents I had. This might wander over there, so this might be the place for us to refill the oxygen. The day is coming. Ah, here comes the sun. Nine. Yes, cooling down. So we have an effective cooling solution, and all it took was two AC. It's not bad. Now someone said you need to step them down from the high temperature to less than that, and maybe that's true. Maybe that's even true. If you want the greatest effectiveness, I'm not sure. Sorry, that was I had to clean the mouse. Uh, but um, just bluntly putting that thing there and saying, "Give me that, give me that," seems to work. 
Of course, if I put up more ACs, I need more uh, gas that I can put into that cooling circuit. This is only, oh, there's some, all right. Uh, this is only O2 and I don't have pure O2 available to me. That's actually the problem. What can I do about that? This is too full. This is too full. This is too full. Here's some room. Ow, this. I never needed this actually. degrees and not counting I guess yeah time to do some soldering huh? but I, I can't, don't have any transportable oxygen anymore Air damn I mean I should not use those reserves now to do what I want to do right now because there might be an emergency when I have to go outside Currently, my going outside is optional. Filtration. Still 34, so... Let's not waste that. I should add a daylight sensor and some logic to do that, but no. I will make solder and then we go MIPS programming. And if you find MIPS programming boring, then I'm sorry. Skip that part of the video. I love programming. I absolutely love it. I've been doing it for 40 years and um, yeah. I have some philosophy around it, but that came after. So maybe it's not even true. But it seems to make sense. I, was already, I also talked about that a few times already, so if you heard that, then you might be bored. But if you're watching this, you're anyway, right? <laughs> um, so, I need oxygen. <clears throat> two, please, to make sure that we have two, please. So I would want to pump in there with an active vent or not? To get more throughput. Well, if I need to, if I need it, hmm. Questions, questions. Or should I just, hmm. I will try without. Let's see how fast that is. If it's too slow, then it's too slow and that will make it faster. You turn off. Yes. Once again, that's why I say it's kind of the most used device. Okay, the philosophy around program that I mean. <clears throat> um, so, to me, um, I, I'm, I have kind of a spiritual worldview. Um, as in, uh, oh, there's a god above that we have to pray to. No, 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 no. So now I know this will be a basically controversial and will be put putting off and will be kind of preaching and so forth. Uh, actually, I'm I'm not I'm not trying to convince anyone of the views that I have, but um, the worldview that I have is a coherent logical whole with no contradictions, which none of you can say I believe. And um, I'm not saying that my worldview is right. Therefore, I'm just justifying why I'm s will will be saying certain things with, because they will just be logically necessary to be said. That's why. Because they're just a part of that. Is this thing still recording? It is. So let's not ponder how I came to those convictions. Uh, because that's um, not productive. Because then we are in the general area of preaching. Where the fuck is my... I did have pipe cowls. Oh, right.
Um, so I believe that the universe is actually a creation. And um, so, uh, by the way, uh, to the atheists in the audience, you and I, we are in the same camp, apart from that conviction. Because I hate, 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 you might fast forward now, hate, 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 and hate, and I hate, and I hate, hate religion to death with my whole fucking heart and angrily so. I fucking hate it. Now, let me express why, I, why that is so. Um, what the world needs is truth. And religion is not that. It is not the path to truth. It is the path to believing despite evidence to the contrary. Now, I'm not saying that all religions are wrong. I'm convinced that they're all wrong, but that's not what I'm saying. I'm talking uh, concepts here. I'm saying that religions um, are shitty epistemology. What is epistemology? Well, that is the way in which we can know things, or which we can reasonably believe things. Oh, I have an empty canister, very good. Um, this needs to be powered, hmm, whatever will I do? And, um, I mean, I've seen so many theist-atheist discussions where I'm always on the side of the atheist, atheist and also discuss for their, ang for their view uh, why do I do that? Because the argument is always against some... St I mean, it really, what I'm doing is I'm just... R it's also how I write stories, you know? I'm actually a very good writer. I know it sounds pompous, but I, every time I read that shit that I wrote years ago, I think, God damn it, this is great. People should fucking read that. I will not point you to that stuff yet. But anyway, what I'm doing there is I set up a situation and then I run the simulation, kind of what we have here. I just run the simulation and I don't do some forced writing where this where artificial drama and shit, but I just run the simulation. If that, if that is then undramatic in some situations but that could have been more interesting, then that's the way it is. I want reality because, you know, a story of like 80% of storytelling or story experiencing rather is about suspension of disbelief. And that implies what? That it is believable. And believable, what does that mean? For a mind like mine at least, one that is fucking pissed off at Hollywood, keep sh keeping uh, showing us that uh, people freeze in space, which they do not. At least not that rapidly, by far not, by far not. Um, I need a uh, believable, consistent reality. See, my resolution, uh, my mental image has a high resolution. This means that all the pixels, they are connected. Uh, the same for a low resolution image, but in a low resolution image, you don't really care how much has been like bluntly ignored because the, the resolution is so coarse, you know? But if you increase the resolution, then you will... Um oh, nice, that's fast. I sure wanted to do that without an active fan. If you increase the resolution, then you have to fill in the missing pixels, so to speak, right? And what do you put in there? Will you just interpolate between the pixels that are already there? That will then just be a blurry image and also you might be overlooking something that is actually true, that is actually more important, that's real. A plot twist, so to speak, you know? Like when you have indeed just a camera recording that the police is using to investigate something and then they get a more higher resolution from a different angle and then what they thought was this sign of a car is actually a different one or no, there was a knife or whatever, you know what I mean. And in this, this way I have a very high resolution image of the world because I strive to actually have one and to res resolve all uh, contradictions possible. And so uh, when I'm seeing theist-atheist debates, then I'm also running the simulation. You know, I'm seeing, uh, th saying, okay, this is the situation, how do we get from A to B? And if a theist is arguing first cause, with which I can kind of quasi agree, which, but it's not a solid argument, I know that, I'm not making that argument, again, I'm not trying to preach here. Um, but then they take the leap, uh, then they are, they are justifying what they're doing there, is they're justifying their belief in Jesus, then I have to say, dude, motherfucker, how do you get from, there has to be a reason for all this stuff to exist, therefore a carpenter was nailed to a cross. Explain that to me, you motherfucking piece of dog shit idiot. 
it really makes me angry because religion that's what many people but even the the governments that govern us the ones that supposedly are the all wise i know they're not i don't believe they're not at all right not really but that's what they're supposed to be the government has to be the the governments have to be the best of us they have to be the re representation of all of us combined but oh without the bad shit you know if possible um and they don't even understand what religion is they do not that's why we uh, and also because of hitler thank you very much we have uh, a very strong reason for religious freedom because if you say religious freedom shouldn't be in the constitutions then uh then you're saying yeah well hitler did that too you for you prayed to the jews and then the gassing and, and so forth yeah i know bad shit shouldn't have happened but um ultimately i am so much against religion that i'm even saying you should fucking outlaw that shit I don't know the practical side of this, sorry, and I, I, I maybe, okay, that's the thing, that's the thing. Am I pro-death penalty? Yes and no. Am I pro-outlawing religion? Yes and no. What's the no part of this? And that is what this, these two sentences are about. The no part of this is that humans are just not capable of enough, of, of, uh, of enough objectivity to make such profound decisions, and that is why I'm against the death penalty in practice. But I do think that uh, some people do deserve death, and um, so um, maybe we can't make that happen reasonably. But see, see, that's the thing. That's you can hold two concepts in your head which seem to be contradicting, but they are not. In this case, they are not. What's happening here? Do we have some? Uh... Okay, we have 800k, which is too many k's. Um. So I need to do uh, Electrum, 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 here we go. How can you be a serious and, and, because I am, and be against the listen? Well, if you keep listening and if I keep talking, then you will understand, but you will also be offended, which might actually diminish your ability to accept the concepts presented or digest them uh, intellectually. So. Uh, temperature 600k to 100,000. Uh, doesn't matter. The pressure needs to be high enough. So uh, maybe we can just toss that stuff in and we'll be fine. Is that fl lever flipped? It's not. Okay. And then the silver. When this thing turns green, at least for the simple furnace, you know, you know you have a working mixture. We do not have that. Uh, we have 1.6k, we have 9 megapascals, there's too many megapascals. Power critical. So governments don't even understand what religion is. It is an infectious disease. I mean, let's just say this. Let's say theism were true. And let's say that people could actually detect that, and they could kind of do science around it, or at least say okay we have detected this for real so we can act accordingly that would kind of be a proper religion you could say even though i would still abhor the fucking concept that to me would still just be theism not religion religion to me is necessarily something that is untrue because okay maybe it's not the best way to say it um maybe we have to talk about meme plexes let's, let's send me a short let's take a short break from station yes i'm sorry uh Okay, let's say someone says to, says to you and you're like in the Middle Ages and you don't have television and your head full of intellectual stuff that is weaved uh, tightly and you still think that bad thing that happened to you wasn't because you didn't wash your hands because you didn't have a clue yet about that but because, I don't know, you were not nice to your, to your children or whatever uh, then someone steps up to you and says Jesus exists and he will save you and after death you will have eternal bliss but you have to have faith in him you know, that you're kind of inclined to maybe possibly believe some bullshit like that but the thing is the thing is uh, when they say all you really have to do all you have to do is have faith all you have to do is believe that then uh, then uh, that's not so hard to do and also since you're not so inclined to clean up your head because you don't have such a tight weave of information that is uh, then dissolving uh, self-contradictions mechanically basically if it's dense enough I experience it again and again um, then uh, you might believe such a thing and uh, then you might 
uh, believe it and you might have some other idea about Jesus, however that came up. You might think something like, maybe he showed himself in the treetop because there was a wind wafting through it just when you thought of him and then you had tears in your eyes and a dopamine kick and you thought, oh, there was Jesus. You know, that happens so many times. It's schizophrenic, basically. That's what it is. Um, yes, that, that is what that is. It doesn't mean you have to be locked up in a hospital, but, you know, it's not just black and white. There's gradients and that is what that is, motherfucker. So, um, if you, then you might believe such a thing and then you might tell the next guy you have to have faith in Jesus and you will also see him act in your everyday life. You will see this and you will see that, you just have to have faith. And the other guy might pick up on that, uh, might uh, accept that and then try it out and then they will have that experience. That is because you can assemble information in your head any, any which, oh sorry, I will just calm down the music, it's interfering with my introduction process. Um, uh, then you will, uh, you can ex assemble information in your head any which way you want, except if you are striving for truth like I am, and if, you're inter 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 if your informational weave in your head has some high resolution like mine has, then uh, um, contradictions will resolve themselves kind of automatically, because your brain will see, well, there's this and there's that, and these two things are mechanically incompatible, so let's just r resolve that and then, uh, yeah, whatever. But and then the person might believe that and they might think, oh, the treetop and this other thing that happened and it had suddenly had some, they would, you know, have that, some confirmation bias. That's confirmation bias uh, with, a, with a little bit of uh, schizophrenia sugar coating. And then they might go on and tell the next guy something and so forth. This is uh, how a memeplex can emerge. And um, now the next guy might not believe a certain aspect that was told to them but they might believe other things. So they will perpetuate that stuff. See, the genes, that these are basically genes, except they're memes, this is uh, from Richard Dawkins, um, that are perpetuated and the successful ones, they, they will perpetuate themselves and the others not so much. But there's random muta mutation here, you know? We are like random generators. We are walking random generators and we also want to entertain ourselves and want to entertain others. And I, as a loner, of course, have had ample opportunity to think for my, by myself instead of having to bend my mind out of shape in the, uh, in the process of communicating with others and having to get the next fuck and whatever kind of shit is going on there. But instead, uh, trying to pursue truth and and reason and uh, whatever, and um, so um, I am absolutely allergic against these mechanisms, which uh, perpetuate and even introduce untruth into the world. And now let's look at the religions, at Islam, as Ju at Judaism, at uh, Christianity. The things that are happening, there are some uh, mild things happening in Christianity. I don't object to Christmas and uh, then also back then when we went to church and then we went home after that, the looking forward to home, the smell of the of the Weihrauch, you know, the, uh, the incense. Mm. I like that, why not, whatever. But um, there are also batshit things that religions are doing. Some Christians are, for example, starving their kids of the medicine that they need to get healed. Some uh, Muslims in Africa are cutting the vaginas of their wives because they think, they think God wants them to not have any sex. So they're bleeding their whole fucking lives. That, I'm not making this up. And there are other examples that I could name, but I don't want to sound as if I'm raiding on certain religions in a certain way or whatever. These, these things are emerging because these people have strong beliefs based upon bullshit. The foundation of their beliefs is bullshit. Maybe Islam is true. I'm not saying it's not. But I'm saying that the way by which these people come to their beliefs, that way is bullshit. That is what I've been talking about these last 20 minutes. How do you get to your beliefs? Epistemology. I don't, know, I don't know how I got there, I guess by talking about theism. Uh, the pressure is now still too high, I think 2.4 is the highest. Uh, 2.4 and we need 600k. Yeah, this is gonna work out, we're gonna get, get our electrum. Um, so, uh, how, why did I want to talk about theism? Yeah, I kind of have a spiritual worldview. Uh, and how did I get there? People, coexistence, logic, programming, philosophy. Um, Two point four, almost. And then this thing will turn green. It is. It has turned green. Electro.
Okay, time for solder then. Save. Uh, that was not the best move, but it's also not so bad, because you can just toss that in again. Uh, what's happening in here? 40 degrees. This is off. This is not on. Damn. Come on. Are we seeding here already? I will create seed. Okay, I have to deal with that for a moment. Maybe we can turn off that stupid breathing, right? Where is my table? Where is my table? Oh, I don't have cobalt yet. Damn. Oh, <laughs> nothing will rot. Lucky. Yeah, I have to deal with that at some point. So room temperature is 40 degrees and it should be cooling down now. It is. Uh, so let's continue with the solder. Where's the iron? Didn't have iron on me. Twenty one. Hunger caution. Of course it would be there. Thirty eight degrees. So um, okay, there's uh, uh, there are uh, many arguments about God, pro and contra. But when people discuss that topic, I'm always on the side of the atheist. I want to reiterate that because the following things I'm going to say are quite uh, will have quite theistic leanings. So um, they will be pissed off by that, but maybe not so much when they understand that I'm in their camp. You know, when it comes to epistemology and ridding the world of the plague that is religion. Mm. Um, kit, the pressure might be too low. What do you need for solder? A D. That's what we need. And pressure, one megapascals. Mm -hmm. Not that quick. Oh, that's nice. We got solder. We have Electrum, we have Solder, we can make our first MIPS ship. That would shut me up, right? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> so, where's my Electrum? Yeah, I think I have to talk a bit more about religion, because there are probably people in the audience who might not even be religious, but will have this thought that religion, yeah, but you have to live and you know, it doesn't do any harm. Dude, these people are infecting each other, and especially their children, for example, Muslims and also some conservative Christians, they have this kind of quiverful concept, you know, the quiver of, of arrows that you shoot in the name of God to, inf to spread the religion. And um, so they try to have children early, and they try to have many children, and they try to make their children believe what they believe. Now that is child abuse, of course, and that infects the world with more of that bullshit. Because once the mind has been, I mean, seriously, these are t thousands of years of memeplex evolution that are being dumped on a children, on a child's mind. Storm tested, bullet tested bullshit. I mean, all the thing that didn't survive, I mean, it's like evolution. Everything, I mean, we are still alive because we are the survivors. Uh, thanks, we're standing on the shoulders of giants of many people who died before us, but kept procreating regardless. And <laughs> I mean, I, not in that order, but um, we, um, in the same way that we have become sophisticated technology that can survive the bacteria that are in our bathrooms uh, um, then in the same way religion has become the successful technology that has survived reason 
that is how you have to look at that. I think that was just less angry, but otherwise a Hitchens worthy statement. And I came up with it myself, hello. Um, so let's make a housing. Because we don't have one, so we have a housing crisis. Yeah, I said that. Make two, maybe. And then two chips also. Um, and there's being dumped on children, and then they're spreading that. And, but what harm does it do? Well, I mean, okay, let's say everybody becomes Muslim or Christian or whatever, or the whole world is just uh, completely believing all that cra crap. Let's say for a second, just for a second, that there is a God. Do you think that the world is capable of doing theism right when everybody's already believing bullshit instead of looking at the world and then seeing the truth possibly? And do you think that atheists are really capable of looking at the topic kind of objectively when they have this justified aversion against religion so much in themselves that when they argue against a theist, uh, in a, against a religious person, they will sometimes like kind of step a bit over the line of reason um, when they, you know, when they say, I mean, certainly there's confirma confirmation bias on both sides and there's some ego in there. I also have that from time to time, but I did strip myself naked before the god of, of logic uh, often enough that I can say that, um, that uh, I have very little confirmation bias. And um, so I can look at the theists and at the atheists, at the richest guys uh, and the, the, the uh, atheists in some kind of I can like kind of look down on them as if I'm kind of superior to them intellectually I'm not saying I know everything I am the superhuman I'm not saying that I'm ta talking about this debate about uh, processing uh, uh, data correctly about epistemology and um, and yes I am better at that shit and uh, in, do you think that atheists are capable in this world that is so infected with religion against which they have a so justified aversion and when they keep arguing against the religious guys and are being confronted with them do they think do you think they can objectively look at the concept of theism no they cannot my experience with internet atheists and i have lots of experience i am uh, in like uh, four to five or to six i will keep that uncertain decades old so i have lots of experience and i spend basically all my free time in front of the computer so i have tons of tons of experience there programming whatever and on the internet and um, then i have seen tons and tons of theist atheist religious uh, debates discussions and um, i see them arguing the, the atheists are also arguing in ways that i can't just can't agree with and my impression is that uh oftentimes they uh, or, or that that basically all that i've seen are not actually capable of really entertaining the concept of a god and that means that their mind is not pure my mind can entertain the concept of no god and the concept of a god or of multi-theism or of islam and of all of that possibly being true because I don't fear to believe, because I know I cannot fall into that insanity. And that is not what the atheists have that I have met. They are clinging to, or they are, they, they cannot really expose themselves to the concept of possibly there being a God. They're, for example, asking, why the fuck would you even do that? Well, have you tried it? Then they would say, yeah, why would I? Because then you might find the answer to the question you just posed three and a half seconds ago, you piece of whatever. Um, I see 10 needs gold. Do I have gold? Our cognition is low. Uh, yeah, <sighs> pill, where is it? Where is my pill? I don't know what exactly just happened. Um, I think I just turned off my filters and that's all that happened and it was unnecessary for me to take the pill. So we should now hunt for cobalt because this way out is now gone. But so is the breathing, so I guess you're applauding that. <laughs> um, I see 10. Gold. Do I not have gold? Yes, that gold. But I mean, smelted gold. Something in here possibly that wasn't triggered? No. Some gold in here maybe? Uh, in here? Why would you entertain such a concept? Because, uh, for example, it, it can explain lots of things. I mean, oh, lots of things? Okay, it's overdoing it. Um, see, and that's me reflecting upon what I just did, realizing it's not truth, and then... 
Yeah, but let's not make that too much. Um, okay, I have the following concept about the universe. The concept, the universe is consciousness Lego. It is, you know, Lego, you know? It's like puzzle pieces of consciousness that God supplies in whatever way that I will, can go into later, but that is then kind of preaching, you know? I don't want to go into that, those things too much, but um, uh, consciousness, consciousness Lego that then assembles itself to consciousnesses. Now, everybody who knows about evolution would say, ha, that guy is full of shit. And I would say, no, you just haven't used your brain yet to ponder that because you're allergic to entertaining that uh, notion for whatever reason. Wait, do we have to use some more gold now? Oh, yes, uh, do I have some more gold? Man, okay, let's smelt that then. Let's say we have an atom that reacts to another atom. That is not an intelligent reaction, that's just nuclear bullshit. Okay, let's say then we have um, a molecule that is capable of producing, of catalyzing copies of itself based upon what the surrounding uh, primordial soups, um, bricks and whatever of molecules uh, supply, and it can make copies of itself. And now it, it, a copy is being made that is not precise, but this copy is still um, capable of uh, functioning. Then. Uh, and it has this DNA concept. Well, I, okay, I don't want to go, go too deeply into that and also don't understand it too deeply. So you can't talk about that bullshit. You just have to understand that you have understood the underlying concept deeply enough and I can reasonably believe that because my informational grid in my mind is dense enough to assess things on such a coarse level still truthfully. Yes. So... Uh, if there is now this mechanism that multiplies itself but does so imprecisely and the copies also still are functional and then copy themselves in, uh, in this same altered way, then you now have basically two species. Uh, well, maybe not two species, maybe it's just two. You know, I'm, I mean, if I have different eye color than my parents, I'm not a new species. Okay, let's not be too strict on the terminology here. But the concept, you know, the concept I think you can appreciate. And um, to all those who believe that uh, evolution is not true because yeah, that's microevolution, but macroevolution. Do it. Explain to me the following. The answer to the following question: What mechanism do you believe exists that uh, prevents macroevolution? Because if you get enough microevolution, then you will have macroevolution. You piece of shit. Same for flat earthers. I, mean, I hate I hate the lot of them. They're just lost. They're the scourge. Good thing they don't have any power. Imagine Islam and uh, Christianity both replaced with the same amount of power and presence, but they're flat earthers. We would all be dead, man. Um. So, um, where do I go for next? Let's concentrate a bit on the stationering because I don't want to die so much. Mm, waste has to be emptied. Temperature high. Yeah, yeah. I want to add another AC to be sure. For that, I need oxygen. Do I have? No, exactly. We need more oxygen production. We have 75%. That's still fine, but uh, that ratio is decreasing. And I also realize we have some volatiles in here, probably from our breathing tank, probably from me having damage to my suit, which then was breathed into my waste tank. Let's put up the portable now. Let's not use the scrubber. Let's not use the portable scrubber and let's not use the portable air conditioner at all in this playthrough on Vulcan. Because so far I didn't and so I won't. I'm pretty sure I didn't so far. That's much cooler to, to do without. So let's use uh, what we have here to filter, our st uh, to filter the air. I need a pipe cowl. Blah, blah, blah. I need to be able to pipe that outside. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I need to make another kid atmospheric, so I don't want to destroy what I have here. <sighs> I don't know where I was exactly. Oh yeah, evolution, right. And um, if you do that enough, then you get, for example, a thing that swims around in the water uh, and it can actually propel itself faster or slower. Maybe only faster or slower, or maybe forwards and backwards. 
and it can sense whether the um, the uh, situation that it is in is hazardous, like too acidic, for example, or whether there is some kind of the sweet stuff that it needs to eat. Let's assume all these things, because we know that this happened, right? And the concept of evolution lends itself to such uh, products. So now we have that simple thing. On what? Uh, right. Okay, I think the both volatiles we no longer have to filter out because they will be gone after this. There's still combustion going on, but too little for it to express itself, I think. Anyway. Um, so, um, this thing is making basically a decision. That decision is, of course, just based upon an acid sensor. Is that consciousness? No, it's not. It's just a chemical reaction. But, what if this thing then develops another molecule circuit, circuitry within itself that kind of looks at this acid sensor decision-making thing? That would be a higher level of abstraction. You know, no, it's, uh, they are, like, you, you're not, okay, um, how to explain this uh, without losing you. I, I basically can't, it's too, too complex. But let's say, uh, if, if the thing looks at its own decision-making with another decision-making thing, which is also just chemical, of course, then we kind of get ended or circuitry, you know? Like, there is food, but there is also acid, but I am also hungry, so I will now eat that. And the right balance of those decisions will then lead to the, to uh, via evolution and many generations lead to the right kind of decision-making in a, just in a, in a simple molecular structure, like in birds, which are kind of dumb, uh, I mean, partly, some of it rather intelligent, I know. I'm just saying uh, there are some intelligent behaviors which are not intelligent, they are bred into those beings by the intelligence of evolution, by the intellect of the logic of reality, of the flow of reality, which is not an intellect. I'm not, not trying to go there at all. Uh, I'm not saying the universe is thinking, and I'm not saying that evolution is guided, even though I do believe in some kind of attractors in the evolution of the cosmos, which also kind of has some guiding effect in regards to evolution, but let's ignore that. Um, so I want to, uh, what did I want to do? Copper. Wait, did I make that thing already? <laughs> I did. <laughs> as long as I'm losing just these things out of my mind, but not you, it's fine. So I want to purify the air. I lost you then. Tough luck. <laughs> Stay dumb then. <laughs> um, filtration. That lost me a few. Um, filtration pipes so um, now evolution is bred into that thing some kind of intelligent ish decision making in regards to do I flee or do I stay or do I, do I do I go there despite there being hazard and or because there is being food now we have some kind of hydration critical uh, a useful decision wait I should use a passive vent here passive vents which many people might not know are actually pipes one of the devs said that recently in a in a Europa playthrough stream, and um, that is also why you can put these directly on here. I know the yellow doesn't mean much because it is sometimes shown even though it, it doesn't apply, but in this case it's true, I tried that. And this also means that you don't have to trans transition from this to something else or whatever, but uh, you will have uh, fast throughput, direct throughput. So now we have this intelligent decision making, but uh, it's not intelligence, right? It's just more like molecules bred by evolution and the ridiculously brutal selection process. Um, ah, it's actually in the wrong direction here. Ah, okay, I need pipes, I need insulated pipes. Do I know, not have any more pipes or did I toss them? I tossed them. I'm a tosser. Uh, uh. Well, so obviously you can, can see, keep uh, working on that front, it's getting more and more complex and still not intelligence, but st now this thing is looking at its own decision making and is realizing, okay, if this, these sensors and these parts are um, deciding like this and those parts of myself and th this thing is deciding like that, then uh, I guess it would be prudent to overall make this and this decision in regards to fleeing or staying or biting or not biting, you know? 
and then that's even more self-reflection. Is that self-reflection? Isn't it? I mean, couldn't it be that what we have in our brains is just that, stacked up to the factor of a trillion, but it's still just that? Didn't I just explain how human intelligence works and, it, and necessarily imply that the universe is cosmos and that there is a creator? Anyway, I didn't want to go there really, but I want to create the... Um, I want to uh, explain why... The, uh, I, okay, here's one thing. What theists and atheists uh, sometimes talk about is, is God objective? Or is it subjective? No, it can only be one. No, no, he can be both. And it actually makes sense. If you are objective, then you're making decisions based upon the best assessment that you can make. You have good measurements, you have good reason to believe that your measurements are good measurements, and you're processing that in the best way possible, and then you're making a decision, and that decision is generally called an objective decision. If God would decide in the situation that he is in, and that this, this, the situation that he is in is obviously nothing, you know, it would just be he, whatever nature he would have, whatever shape he would have, whatever and so forth. So what he would base his decisions, however spontaneous and arbitrary and subjective they might be, on himself. And so there would be objective decisions, even, they, even though they are also subjective decisions. That's funny, right? I mean, isn't that funny? But I've never heard that discussed. But so what I also haven't heard discussed is the following. Atheists say to theists, um, well, there's no reason to believe uh, that uh, God created people because uh, we only ever see uh, consciousness being uh, uh, arising from uh, from evolution, from biological beings. There is no con there, why, why should there be a consciousness from the get-go and then, then there is consciousness at the end and between there is nothing? Do it, obviously, because there is some technology involved. There is always this stupid fucking smoke bomb that the religious keep smoke, uh, throwing around in the world of... Um, omnipotence like God can do anything ever what does that even mean I mean when you nail it down uh, then they will indeed, indeed eventually respond yeah that's he can only do what's logically possible and then he will ask okay I can do what's logically possible I don't have wings so I cannot fly so I am omnipotent just like God is you are omnipotent everybody's omnipotent by their logic so what the fuck is the situation that God is in is the question we have to ask if we want to find out what he can and can't do and thus how the universe would, the universe would have to and have not been created. And the way that I deciphered this, or, okay, let's not go there, but the way that I um, uh, hypothesize uh, is that uh, it was necessary to invent unconsciousness for the multitude of consciousness to be able to emerge. And therefore, we had to start at the state of no consciousness. And, in, you know, I mean, how would a consciousness create multiple consciousnesses out of itself? How would it do that if not by inventing some kind of barrier? And that would then necessarily be the invention of unconsciousness. But, but if all that exists before the universe is pure consciousness, that is quite the invention, isn't it? I'm, maybe the death and unconsciousness are actually the same thing. Maybe we actually, maybe there's even death in the world at all because unconsciousness had to be invented. But, and okay, let's not go there. My personal view is that the cosmos is actually heaven in the making. That, that God will actually live among us eventually. That is actually my, uh, my conviction. But, um, you know, how do I get from, from there to programming? I mean, I really don't want to preach, but these, uh, uh, these concepts are just uh, also interconnected. Maybe you don't see that, but that is because because I haven't explained it enough, and if I do so, then eventually you might still say, oh, I don't see that, because uh, maybe it's just don't, you know, it's a matter of information density, I guess. Um, so. Sorry if I'm pomposifying myself a bit much this time, but um, I will do it regardless. Huh. So, um, if God has to invent the component of unconsciousness to be able to give rise to consciousnesses, then, well, necessarily consciousness that we observe would only be risen from, from biological structures, you know? And what I actually think is, at the beginning, there was this, the consciousness of God. Then he makes a decision, into which I might also go later this video, who knows? And uh, then that leads to this puzzle that the universe is, which then keeps deciphering itself, and then it leads to the deciphered spots, where there is again just the consciousness, like it originally was. Calm spots, where there's just I am. And guess what? That's us. That is where the universe has found a spot of no 
reactional necessity. That is what our consciousnesses are. Spots where no further reaction has to take place. Our brains might just be vessels for such a configuration. That is maybe what's going on. I mean, people are saying that the brain is only happening on the macroscopic scales, you know, um, neurons and such. But I believe that is rather a quantum microscope that interacts in ways that, that we haven't yet deciphered uh, on the scales that are below what we have yet measured. Also, it's very hard to make sense of those things because you would have to have statistical interpretation. And also, who knows? I mean, before the universe, there was no, su no, no such thing as location, right? Because there was just I am. And now we have quantum stuff that is non-local, that uh, has uh, like spooky interaction at a distance, so to speak, but it doesn't allow information transmission, it's just uh, logically connected. But still, there are these entanglements. And so um, maybe we cannot actually measure our consciousness, and not even uh, statistically so, because for that we have to like measure all over the cosmos, because maybe that might just have no location again. Um, okay, what's going on here? There is no more water. Hey, we can move the water thingy. Empty enough-ish, empty enough-ish. Oh, motherfucker. Oh, no, it's it, uh, not motherfucker. It's, uh, it's alright. No motherfucking needed. Do not fuck your mothers. So, I need some cables. Well, they have their fair share, that's why you exist, so don't do that. Cable. Cable. Now let's get back to programming. Maybe we should actually start from that angle now, because apparently it led me down this rabbit hole deeply enough that if I ever need to go there again, this video or whenever, I will manage. So... <clears throat> So I believe that before the universe, God was free to do whatever the fuck he wanted to do. Anything. Everything. And uh, then he had to tie, tie himself into some kind of algorithmic dream, like all his experiences are dreams when he's not in I am state, where he just exists quietly. And um, then every decision that, that's actually the nature of time, you know? Time is not so complicated. Is there a future? Is there a past? No, it's bullshit. There's only the present. There's only this moment. You might think there's a future, and meaningful as a concept, of course there is a future, and there is a past, but it's not a stream. It's not the fourth dimension. That's also why we can't move on that, on, that, uh, uh, on that axis, because there's no axis. There's just this moment, and this moment is God, and it is alive. But again, I'm preaching. That's, damn, I, I don't want to go there, man. What I want to do instead is, so um, then now the mind is uh, imprisoned, and we um, okay. We, we can actually uh, toss that whole theism shit, and we can just say um, at the beginning we were in caves and we were freezing, and we needed food, and many of us died, and our teeth were bad, and we were had the age of 25 or 30 maybe at the most, and then we were dead, rotten died torturously by all kinds of stupid uh, diseases. And I, I assume, actually, that back then we were not so sensitive, pain-wise, because um, I think that uh, if... I mean, imagine, with our current pain sensitivity, but you would sit, be sitting there at the age of 16 with rotting teeth and uh, all kinds of illnesses and ailments, and you would suffer, consciously so, deeply so. And there are so many opportunities to actually die. How would, would you make it? I think evolution gave us also a deeper sense of, uh, of uh, awareness regarding our well-being over the course of time than we had before. So I guess that those people did not suffer as much. Maybe they suffered just as much as we did. Or maybe a, bit, a, little, maybe a little less. I mean, I'm currently talking uh, first world, you know. The first world that should be all over the world, you know. Therefore, we should take care of the reproduction because we are 8 billion people that's way too many we need like 2 billion people or 3 because I want everybody to have the same living standard that I have you know 
some apartment, being able to shower, warm, uh, internet, um, uh, food, all of that stuff. Everybody should have that, but we don't have the resources. Eight billion people, could you stop the fucking fucking, please? We have too many people on this planet. That is the truth. No, we just distributing the food. But first of all, I don't believe that. I do not believe that. And second of all, you have been making that argument for like 30 years, and you still haven't managed to do that. So the problem apparently is not, I mean, even if that is the true answer, what is the solution to that problem then? If you can't figure that out, then maybe maybe we should consider that what I'm saying is rather the solution, procreate a less. Uh, Anyway, uh, first world, uh, what was I saying? Pain, uh, yeah. I was talking about pain, or rather the suffering back then. So it was cold, they didn't want to have it cold, so they made fire. And uh, they built houses. So basically, from the beginning, our experience bred into us by evolution, or by the consciousness of ego that might be the universe, whatever. Um, we were striving for convenience. And we were striving to free our will to free our minds, to make reality in the way that we need it to be. Like in this game, for example, when I try to shape reality so that it is the way I like it. That is what we want, and we're getting better at this. And programming is like the pinnacle of that, when you are devising a concept on a high abstraction level, telling that to reality, and then reality will automatically shape itself according to the things that you de de defined. You don't even have to say, move this thing over there, and then move that thing over there, but it will automatically decide to move that thing over there when it thinks it is the right moment to do so, in the way that you de described. So programming is like, um, it's really something that I believe everybody should uh, learn as a skill, because uh, it's just natural that we free our will. And the freest way to do that is to let someone else do that work while you do your own work. We, we, yes, slavery is all right, as long as your slave is a machine. I wanted to filter the air, I think. Uh, okay, this is the gas I want to filter out, which will be the volatiles and the whatever other stuff might be here. Uh, pollutions, volatiles, yes. This annoys me. This doesn't. Power low. Am I still? How about our plants? How are we doing? 37 degrees still, god damn it. Moderately well. I guess we will only get one this time. Because it's just too warm in here. I think we have to work on the cooling system. It is not strong enough for the purposes. The room is too large for this. But first, do the filtering of the air. That... Yeah, why do I believe that we need to have a truthful world? Dude, have you all forgotten where you're coming from? Your father is... Evolution. Evolution is your father. No matter who the fuck made the universe or how the universe came to be or if it is eternal, evolution is your father. And your father told you, behind that tree, the tiger is still there. Believe it. You better fucking believe it. Or you will get eaten. You will get eviscerated. It will be painful. You will not live. And you will not fuck. Therefore, by extrapolation, truth shall rule the world. Only truth and nothing but that.
pollution is not going down possibly because the air is uh, there's so much here and it's only pulling that stuff in weekly but i think i did this here did this correctly so just oh look at that so let's just keep this running we need to work on energy production uh let's put up some more wind turbines like four or so if you can actually make those upright wind turbines See, I mean, if you believe that you're a good person, but you, you do not strive to be the most truthful being that you can be, not necessarily in speech, but at least in, in your mind, you know, purify it. Make it a coherent whole, even if that hurts your ego, even if that means you have to abandon those religious beliefs that you, that you were bred into, or what you want to call that. Even if that is what it means, you have to do it. Evolution is telling you that. The fucking Pope is agreeing that evolution is true. So he is agreeing that you should abandon Christianity. So do that then. Abandon your beliefs. Or at least call them into question. At least distill them down to what you can reasonably believe and what is really just baseless bullshit. If there is a Jesus or not, I don't know. I mean, you know, how can you... I, let me tell you about faith. You're all doing it wrong. All of you are doing it wrong. Hey you, if you believe in, in Jesus, he will save you, right? Or he will see that you have a good life. And, and also he did all those things for you. I mean, he suffered on the cross and he died to death. And, and he did all that for you and for, for everybody. So that we can be free and that we can, we can be heaven. And that sins, whatever that really is, I will go into that later, hopefully, can be forgiven. He did that, yes. I mean, that's, some, that's you, what you believe, right? And maybe that's even true. Let's entertain that for a moment. And all you have to do is have faith in him so that he can reach out. Maybe it works like this. Maybe when you die, your soul will still be there. But you won't know where to go. And you will have so many teachings from the life that you have. Your current human life. Where there can be so many torturous things. That you will be... That you will have so many ideas in your head of pain and suffering. And then you will just be living fantasy. Free fantasy like God was before the universe. And then you might be locked in, uh, into some kind of hell. Probably only temporarily, because if you're like God, which you are, if, if you're believing in a theistic worldview, and uh, if you're believing in Jesus and God and all that, then you are just like him. You are like a copy of him in small. You're a child of him. Then you're like just like him. And um, then you um, would, of course, eventually decipher those misconceptions and wake up to the peacefulness of existence. But Jesus wants to spare you those, who knows, eons of, of purgatory when you purge yourself of all those stupid ideas. And, you know, purgatory actually makes sense as a concept. You think about it. If you have done evil shit in your life, and if God will never do evil shit, now, if you are actually God's child, then waking up to being one of his children in that void after death would mean that you would wake up to that purity. And that would mean that you would wake up to the realization of what you have done. And then you would punish yourself. You would feel the suffering of that evil that you have done. You would feel that. And um, so basically Jesus is saying, don't do that shit. But if you do, just have faith in me I will help you through it. When you die and you have faith in me, you will feel me out there in the void. I can, and, and I can touch you with my hand. And I will take all of those evil fantasies out of you. I will help you decipher that shit. And you will be free, just like we are all free. Yeah, for the record, I don't believe any of that. But that's the thing, I can entertain those notions deeply, because my mind is free. Why don't you free your mind? It also makes for better storytelling. Because, I mean, if you can believe anything without getting lost in it, then this also means... I'm sorry, the microphone. Uh, if you can believe anything without getting lost in it, then this also means you can ent enjoy any kind of film. I love the Twilight films. But I also see how ridiculous they are in part. I love science fiction, I love action films, I sometimes watch some kind of intellectual high art-ish kind of films, I, and so forth, but not mostly I'm watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and stuff, stuff like that, admittedly. But uh, my mind is free, free your mind. Free yourself of the dependency of be having to be this person, or that person, or, or I don't know, it's, all of that is unnecessary. You can be what God is. 
You can just be. You don't have to have an identity. Yeah, be beyond that motherfucking shit. A bit weaker than I expected. Um, we are wasting a lot of electricity here. Maybe I want to use an active vent here too. Let's see how fast that then goes. See, that's the idea with uh, Jesus. And now, true faith means that you have entertained the idea of Jesus. I mean, if true faith in Jesus means the following. To have entertained the idea of Jesus and to have learned how important that is that faith, but then to stop having that faith. Why? Because then you are having faith in having faith, or you're having faith in Jesus so much that you're just saying, I don't even have to have faith in him. He will take care of that too when, it's, when, when the need arises. Right? And this means that if you are deeply ingrained in the Christian belief because of this faith in Jesus root that is so buried under all these other misconceptions in your head, you can free yourself of that because you don't have to have faith in him at all. If the need arises, you will be able to reach out and um, or he will reach out, whatever. So true faith uh, or true, true peace of mind, I mean, it doesn't have to be in Jesus or anything. I mean, for example, Alcoholics Anonymous, they're saying, well, there's a higher power. Yes, there is. The universe. When you go to sleep, you're giving yourself to the universe. And when you wake up your mind, your brain will have sorted, have been sorted somewhat. <laughs> that is you having faith in the universe. And in the same way, you need to have faith in the universe to overcome the addiction. It will heal you. It will help you. Have faith in the universe. That is never wrong. And I'm sure that ne neither Jesus, nor God, nor Mohammed would object that if you have faith in the creation of theirs or of, uh, of, of God to, uh, you know. I mean, um, I, but how do you have faith? How do you overcome such? Well, now we're getting some kind of uh, too, too many possibilities, too bizarre, too um, puzzleish. So let's let go of that topic for now. Do I have faith? No. I, why would I have faith? I don't need it. I just live my life. And that's the same with the atheists do. So I'm an atheist apart from the fact that I believe there's a God. Uh, where is my iron? I need iron. And, um, well, mm, not sure what to do next. I need an AC. Ah, uh, that would have been nice. I need an um, active vent. Uh, so I can only say everybody should try to get rid of their um, their misconceptions. The world, I uh, mean, what I mean, see, evolution taught us that truth is okay. What what is truth even? Truth is that which is, and we, if we if we're talking the territory of intellectuality of uh, in, in the intellect and communication information processing, then truth is uh, the correct dealing with this manifest truth with the reality. You know that's what that is: truth, truth, and truthfulness. And uh, evolution taught us that truth rules, and therefore your mind it should be truthful. What do I need? Copper. Oh, I'm stupid. So why does it suddenly stop when we are in the human realm? Why is suddenly lying and making up bullshit the better way to coexist? Are you kidding me? It's not. It's not. It's absolutely not. If we want to live together as people, peacefully and, f and working for finally after after thousands or tens of, so tens of thousands of years, if we want that, then what we want is the world to be ruled by truth and by truth alone. And this means that everything that is an agent of untruth must be abolished. If you disagree, you have to reconsider. You have to reconsider because you are objectively wrong. Otherwise, I hope evolution takes care of you. Yeah, I just... <laughs> mic drop. <laughs> so, I need some pipe here. Uh, Temperature, 26. Okay, we're kind of fine, but I won't put up another AC anyway. So this thing's completely ineffective right now, not surprisingly. 
However, when we turn on the active vent, then all of a sudden we will observe that things are getting better. O point O two one mole. O point O two mole. O point O one nine mole. Yeah. Yeah, about that Jesus myth. Uh, let's say that Jesus, uh, that God created the world. Let's, I mean, the, the, you know, the Christian God that I don't believe in and that I think is complete bullshit. You know, I think that the Jesus thing is complete bullshit, Mohammed is complete bullshit. I believe that. And to each their own, right? Right? Yeah, there will be death. When you're dead, you will be dead. But let me live Is what they believe and will tell you in not so many words. And they are pieces of dog shit for that and God hates them. Okay, God hates when they do that. You know, hate the sin, not the sinner, is what they say, and uh, yeah, I kind of, agree, kind of agree. Though, I mean, seriously, let's say someone comes from a foreign country, and then there is a disease there, which could be in our country too. But uh, you know, we have our diseases; they have their diseases. We have our immunities; they have theirs. Now, you can, in the foreign country, you have that disease, and it's infectious. Now, they realize that you have the disease so they won't let you in at the border they will quarantine you so that you don't infect other people why is religion an exception of that rule I, I know I see the practical concerns and also is much more complex it's not just okay you objectively have this virus and objectively does this thing and that, 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 that because it's too uh, it's not immediate enough not clear enough but ultimately we're dealing with a disease here religion is a disease it infects the mind and you bet that God, if he exists, objects to religion. Because religion makes the people believe things for the wrong reason. Why did he give us this reasoning apparatus that he bred by the brutal concept of evolution? And oh, by the way, why did God use the concept of evolution? Why did he do that? Well, this lends itself to ponderings as to the nature of God, of course. What stuff did he have available to work with to make the universe happen? And I don't see theists and religious types do that. And this means they are doing theism wrong. They are just infants. They're not even children. And I spit on that. Speci uh, especially since they actively infect the world with their bullshit. I mean, if you infect the world with your bullshit, at least know what the fuck you're talking about. Okay? At least do us that. Um, what's the word? Um, courtesy, yeah. An AC, please. Many kids atmospherics. Well, this is Vulcan. I don't know how to deal with uh, outlawing religion and practice, and I think this is also not what will actually happen or would actually solve the problem, but in co conceptually that's the way. Just like I'm saying that the death penalty is conceptually a meaningful thing to have, we're just not capable enough of implementing it correctly. I mean, look at the United States. They're basically telling themselves that they shouldn't have the death penalty. How are they telling themselves that? By being too stupid to bring those people to death in a way that is uh, humane. I will not talk about uh, reasonable ways to bring uh, people to death uh, for obvious reasons, um, because that is territory that you shouldn't get into. Um, but uh, I'm saying, uh, this is an AC. I'm saying there are much better ways than buying some expensive chemical from some company that may or may not be available at the time, so they have to stay longer on death row or whatever. <laughs> their justification for that is... Justification? Explanation, rather. Um, to inject the uh, the guy there. I mean, what? I mean, that is cruel and unusual punishment, right? You strap them down and then in inject them with that stuff and you know that things can go terribly, 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 terribly wrong when when uh, when that uh, 
when that doesn't happen correctly, I mean, the news articles are plenty. When there was some, uh, the, they didn't hit the vein with this in chemical, only with that. And so there was deep suffering for 45 hours and then finally death sets in. And then they shrug their fucking shoulders and they move on. Why? Why don't they use uh, the humane ways of killing someone when they have chosen to do so? And by that, they're kind of telling themselves, we actually don't really want to do that because we don't, know what, we don't want to do that right. Or rather, maybe what they're telling themselves is, we don't care about undue punishment. Like when you, when you decide for the death penalty itself, you might, I mean, maybe there's really some situations where it's un, un, undoubtable. We can really be sure that guy doesn't have a Siamese, uh, not Siamese, an identical twin. He, he had like 500 witnesses who observed that. All of them did not talk with each other. They were not, uh, they were completely independent. There was also a camera and so forth. There are probably objective ways to find such out such a thing. And yeah, then maybe a death penalty is actually reasonable. But there are many cases, I believe, when it is um, ruled for that are not that contrasty, right? And that's the same with religion. Do I want to outlaw it in practice? Maybe not, but it should not be in the world. It's the strongest Asian ag agent against reason that I know of. And that is how you can be a theist, but hate religion. That is how you can be on the side of the atheists um, while um, at the same time uh, having a theistic belief. See, that makes sense. And I guess that most of you, most of the three and a half people watching this, um, to, to this <laughs> length, <laughs> um, didn't even consider that. Or did, would, would have thought, no, that's bullshit, blah, 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 and now realize, oh, that actually makes a lot of sense. And, um, yeah, I guess the whole world is like that. So, meme plexus, right? Um, the government stopped. Wait, first, I have to concentrate a bit on this. Pollution is almost gone. Ah, what to do next? What to do next? Let's first take care of the most uh, urgent things, which is planting. I need some water here. I need to plant some stuff. Uh, so I need to mine so I get more iron. I need to drink. I need to do fulfill these guys. For that, I need to use the landing pad switch there, and I don't even know if that works. Do I have enough oxygen? No, I do not. Yes, I do. I can swap that out. Mm. Electricity. Yeah, we have some problem there. I said I want to make some upright wind turbines. Iron, gold, copper. So we need to go mining, period. We need to go mining. Or rather I, because I'm the only one watching this still. <laughs> mm. Can I make steel pipes? Silicon. Do I have some silicon somewhere? I do not have. Off. 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 Wired up correctly. Let's top this up a bit. Ah. Yeah, the thing is, um, someone who might possibly be religious and hear what I said, they would they would just stop the video because they're too offended. But that's the thing. If I say piece of sh dog shit asshole and so forth, that is offensive. But if you take offense by that, then you're just a child. Because if I, some guy who doesn't even know you, calls you an asshole and even supposedly mean it, which I don't, only conceptually in the case of, you know, some types, I said that in this video, uh, then uh, you can easily say, well, the guy can't mean me for he doesn't know me. Therefore, I am not offended and deem that guy an idiot for not knowing me, yet having that kind of judgment over me. <laughs> and that is what uh, intellectual purity gives you. Um, do I do that? Do I have some uh, emotional uh, uh, agitation sometimes? Yes, I do. 
but it usually evaporates rather quickly in the drain that is the tightly woven uh, understanding of uh, that I've built in my mind. So if you purify your mind, you will also purify your emotion implicitly. You will free yourself. Is that not something you want to do? And how do you do that? Well, for example, one of the practices is when you go to bed, when you're sleeping, when you're going to sleep, uh, but that's something you should do for years, basically, you should observe your mind as it goes quiet. Everybody's mind will do different things in th that regard, I guess, but um, then you will be uh, observing some things about your mind, some self-reflection on levels that you normally don't have. And that will uh, help you purify it. And another thing I said in another video is uh, that um, if you like if you spell something wrong all the time even though if when you look up that spelling you know how to spell that correctly afterwards for a few minutes and then you kind of forget it again or when you when you say someone's name wrong um, like you calling them this even though they're called that again and again but then you immediately correct yourself so there's some kind of mechani me me mechanic problem in your head right um, now you could say there was a mechanic problem in my head too when I had the stutter right now, but that's not necessarily the case, because right now I'm implicitly interacting with an energetic cloud that is outside my mind. Maybe it's only imaginary, who knows how this all works, while well, my concept of the world implies that I'm actually interacting with your energy right this moment, and with a potential uh, um, audience, that is also why I publish my writings uh, on uh, some website out there all the time, because then, implicitly, I have potential readers, which will then potentially interact with me energetically, and thus act as some kind of uh, typo and uh, inconsistency and plot hole finder, and I'm not saying I know that this works, but I do have the feeling that it does. Like when you write a tweet, and right after you realize, ah shit, there was a typo. That is not always because you were too fast. That is also because your consciousness was doing different things when it was typing, and then when uh, afterwards when it had sent that. Now this doesn't have to mean the things that I say that I'm saying, but I'm saying that maybe this part of that plays a role there. Yeah, maybe that's indeed going on. How did I get to that topic? Um, da da da, stutter, cloud. When you have some uh, some something in your head that you always do wrong somehow, then you should try to correct that, even though it seems uh, unimportant. Because um, everything in your mind is connected. It's a oneness. Let's think of it like a circle. But uh, whose mind is really a circle? I'm trying to make mine a circle where it's just like flat, and whatever exposes itself to then is just outside of it in a way, and then I calm down again, and then I'm me. Then I'm just I am. You know. Then I'm just. Uh, uh, just awareness in a, in a space-time situation, which is what your identity is. You are the universe and mm, from your perspective, and I am the universe from my perspective. You know, implying the brain structures and so forth, but ultimately you're just awareness, you're just consciousness. That's, I believe, what is, I, at least I believe that, obviously. But I mean, what, what is your identity? What you have learned in your life, uh, the things that you have attained, your genetic configuration? Yeah, doesn't this come down to your identity is the universe? Your space-time situation in the universe? Yes, that's what it means. And so what you should then do is try to find your true, true self. And what is the true self? That is the one trying to find it. The one trying to find the self. That's you. So um, trying to find your true self is probably um, rather trying to become dominant as the awareness within the structures that are in your brain which have been bred into you by your life and genetics and the, and the brain's uh, overall configuration. So um, here's, here's something I possibly also said in another video. Uh, there is an exclamation point in your brain, uh, metaphorically speaking. That is the things that you believe in, the things that you know. And you have shi a shit ton of those, a shit ton of stuff that you just, that you believe. Yes. And um, and you also have a question mark in your head. That is the inquirer. That is the consciousness. That's the one who wonders. That's the one who, for example, sometimes might think, oh, life, I don't know, what, what should I do? Why should I do this thing? It's, is it fun? I, why, why am I having fun? It's, well, I don't know. Uh, and, and then you think, ah, it's fun. So I will just do it for, to have fun. And that's what you should then collapse into. And not so much into the depressive side, if possible. Because that's more fun. And um, then there's the other side. Um, there's um, um, 
Yeah, that's the moment when you are inquiring, when you're throwing your mind at it. And sometimes when you, are, uh, when you, uh, when you have forgotten how something that you have written a thousand times is spelled, what's happening at that moment is that you're throwing your awareness too strongly at these few neurons which have that data so that you're like a co a casting an uncertainty cloud at them uh, so that they can recon be, be reconfigured to have a different configuration, different statement. You're, that's basically what's happening there, it's just an imbalance. And then you find it again, or you, you just have to let go, or you just have to look it up again, I don't know. Depends on circumstances, I guess. Um, so, uh, everything in your mind is connected. But, um, you're right, the, con the exclamation point is your beliefs, and the question mark is the inquirer. And what you have to aim for, and that is the truth for everybody, listen up. You must strive to learn to configure yourself, to, to improve yourself, to purify yourself, so that the following is the truth that your question mark is always a wee bit stronger than the exclamation point in your head. Then you have found yourself. That is how to find you, that is how you be yourself. And therefore to find yourself you have to be skeptical. Skepticism doesn't mean nah that's probably not true or ah, nah, I don't like that, nah, I'm skeptical about that. No, skepticism means to improve the resolution of your mental image. A child is born with a low resolution image and only sees mama and whatever kind of things and then over time this resolution, this uh, image resolution increases and then the child will fill in uh, dots in between and then the religious type comes and says yeah it's because of Jesus and the child believes that and is basically broken forever. Thank you. I hate those people. Don't do that man. And when you go out there and walk, it's a completely different topic now, and uh, you smoke your cigarette in one hand and your child is in the other hand, and I hope you get cancer, and I mean that, I hope you get cancer and die from it. Now, but if you don't, then you do you. It's, uh, it's your joy, right? You can do whatever the fuck you want. It's your life. But as soon as you do that, you're off of my love list. Need some gold, I guess. Iron, also. Mm, yeah, the question mark has to be louder than the exclamation point. Then you've found yourself, and one of the ways to do that is to be skeptical. Skepticism is when you increase the resolution of your image in your head because you believe that the current resolution is insufficient, or when you call the pixels that you have found so far in your current resolution image when you call the meaning of those pixels into question, when you think, oh, I filled in the wrong color here, possibly, let's re-verify re that. That is skepticism. And also, when you increase the resolution, when you think, okay, I think that's what, what re reality is like, but maybe there's more, maybe I should have to look deeper than the increasing the re resolution. I strive for increasing my resolution as much as possible, uh, and I'm sorry for the pronunciation, um, and uh, to also uh, make it uh, as consistent as possible and so I can actually look at those things in this way because if you do a thing often enough then you understand what you're doing because you have enough data points because then you can look at the set from above then you're no longer in the forest seeing the trees and not re realizing that you have found yourself within yet another forest but you will look down from on top of it and that's what I do I have understood abstraction that there's an abstraction hierarchy in the cosmos that when you make projects you should start with the best possible abstraction of it before going into it else the whole thing will be fucked from the get-go and so forth um, and so uh, you should try, strive for skepticism. Skepticism will allow you to be more truthful, will allow you to uh, deal with misconceptions, so that basically between every little belief pixel in your head, there will be a little consciousness pixel. And this will then mean that, your amount of, that the question mark in your head and the exclamation point in your head is balanced out. And that is successful living. Of course, the religious types will try to make you successful in life by following their bullshit. They will actually apply the concept of evolution. They will diminish your, um, I mean, your striving to improve your well-being. And your sensors for well-being, so to speak, mental and physical, have been given to you by evolution. And the religious types will abuse those sensors by making you suffer if you don't follow their bullshit. They will say, they will shun you. They will say society doesn't like you. You will don't, you won't get as much free stuff and so forth. <coughs> so they will apply the concept of evolution to force you to do to, to follow their bullshit and then you will even implicitly believe that their bullshit is true because now you're suffering less so evolution is just speaking to you whispering in your mind 
this is the truth for your suffering less now. This is how this old shit works. Have you never thought about this? Have you never thought about this? Why are you even living? What are you even doing? You, you're, you're asleep at the wheel. Wake up! Become as conscious as you can possibly be. Become God if you can. Maybe we're even waiting for one of us to wake up the fuck as hard as they can. Because maybe the creator is even among us, but he doesn't know it yet. Is this thing still recording? Two and a half hours of ranting, not bad. And they're not regret. Um, I mean, every second sentence was was right. That's a good uh, good average. <sighs> All right, I want to do that. Empty this then. The evolution is, um, in a way, you could say the evolution wants the beings to become conscious. Now, uh, those who insist on atheism will say, no, evolution insists on nothing. It will just kill you if you're not good enough. And if you're good enough, you will survive. And then you procreate and then kind of that, you know? <clears throat> so, um, my personal opinion is that we, the people, the human beings, are indeed the uh, the crown of evolution. Now, the... Uh, those who uh, I just mentioned earlier uh, would say, no, we're not. Um, actually, the ants or, or the fish or the dolphins or whatever the fuck. But I disagree. Because, 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 listen up. You types who believe that, listen up. I have a very good argument. And please take it to heart and see if, if it makes sense to you. Um, evolution is about adaptation. Now, who is more adaptable than us? Guess by now I need a stacker, huh? <clears throat> Beep! Still working? Yeah. I mean, really, consciousness is the goal. You should become as conscious as possible. Also, isn't it so that if you have something in your life that you don't like, but that you eventually learned to overcome by means of using your brain, you have done that ultimately by ascending in regards to consciousness. Doesn't this mean that more consciousness can lead to a better way of life. It can also lead to more suffering, admittedly. For I am suffering, but I've come to terms with mankind. I basically hate mankind. Because if I look at the world, if, if I look at this many-headed demon, which it is in my opinion, then I think, God damn it, this is the planet that we have, these are the options that we have, this is what evolution taught us to be and to do, and then we infest this planet with religion, with lying for power, with lying for fucking, with procreating beyond reason, with destroying the environment, with... and so forth. Why are we doing that? Because we have lost our way. Because we are no longer looking at reality from that identity that we should have from being the awareness in the space-time situation, but we are looking at reality from from the exclamation point in our heads. Our question marks are not loud enough. We are operating, for example, by on, based on our beliefs of what the other guy might believe. Of us. And then we are, and then we are acting in some w weird way that the other guy will in turn interact with, and so we are creating some kind of completely convoluted, stupid maze. You cannot know anything about what the other guy believes. And even if so, even if you can actually read minds, even if you actually know with absolute objective certainty what the other guy is believing of you, but you don't know that this is so, even if that's actually what's happening, maybe that's even how the universe emerged, maybe we're really one consciousness turning into many, maybe we're really a big fucking construct, maybe we are really a many had a demon that has to become individuals, true individuals, like I'm fucking preaching to you. Maybe, maybe that's really what it is. But
But the fact is, you cannot know that. And so by logic, by intellectual property, uh, uh, by intellectual um, uh, process, by epistemology, by proper coming to terms with what you can and can't believe and can't know, I can and can know. By that, you must dispel that belief. You you believe that of the other person, but that belief is not justified. And this understanding that this belief is not justified must ultimately grow in strength, strong, uh, great enough to dispel that part of your brain. And who knows? Maybe then you become a co-creator, because who knows? Maybe the universe is not actually created yet completely. Maybe we are actually working with, on this project with a big guy. And who knows, maybe there is no big guy anymore, if there ever was one. Maybe he's us now. Wouldn't that make sense? The way we deal with the concept of God is if it's nothing often, because we are on that same level, and we kind of know that. That's also why we believe that death cannot be the end, because of course we are eternal. But death, in my conviction, as a theist, is the end. I believe that when we die, we're dead. We're just gone. We no longer exist. That's the end, period. But I do believe that eventually we won't have to die. Uh, smelt it, smelt. AC, power, gold. Let's work on the power first because that's fundamental infrastructure. Iron, gold, copper. This is five wind turbines iron, uh, f almost five, it's four gold, not enough copper. We need some foundations, so we need some, do I have some still? One, one's not enough. And this I don't have to lug around this whole time. Yeah, have lost our ways because we are not um, acting based upon I've seen the tiger walk behind the tree. My assumption is it's still there. I will not just walk there because well, you can't see the tiger, therefore there's no tiger. <laughs> oh, I'm suffering. Oh, now I'm dead. Now I'm in my afterlife. <laughs> um, but instead we're acting based upon fantasy. We are basic, acting based upon convictions that we have. And these convictions are manifestations. See, um, I mean, to me, a will that anyone else has and acts upon is just as real as reality. I respect you. I respect everybody's will. I mean, the way I'm expressing myself here seems like I don't, but when I'm interacting, I mean, here I'm talking concepts and how the world should and shouldn't be. When I'm interacting with people, I treat all of them, uh, if they are not actually, if it's not really deep fucking offense, attacking, physical, whatever, like uh, just on a general level of same as me, and I'm nice to you, and I hold the door, whether dick or pussy, and I um, um, will, uh, when I am kind of offended, I will possibly think you should die of cancer in an acid bath, screaming for 10 years, but then I will wake up, my emotion will dissolve in the logic of my, uh, that I have uh, assimilated over years, and I will realize, not only is that unreasonably uh, excessive, but also, do you even know that you're true, uh, that you're rightfully offended, and so forth. So this concept of skepticism can lead to a more peaceful world, because when people are offended by each other, even if justifiedly so, what good does that do? Do we have to give back the exact same energy? And don't we usually give back more energy, thus escalating that whole bullshit? That's what Jesus said, you know? He said, offer your other fucking cheek. He didn't say that because he wanted you to become a, uh, become the, 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 the uh, what's the word, the carpet where you wipe your shoes. He didn't want you to become that. He wanted you to de-escalate, take some energy out of this shit. And when he draw, drew in the sand and said, uh, you know what, uh, all of you who don't have some shit on, on their plate, uh, on their uh, account, you throw a stone. The others, fuck off. Um, in not so many words. Then, um, then what he said was, you can't know. You c I, mean, he also, I mean, he also said, um, it, would it be just if you do that? When you yourself maybe deserve the fucking stone, even though there's no law for that in your case, or maybe they haven't caught you yet? But he also probably meant, um, you don't know that. And if you don't know that, should you do this? 
You're killing someone by throwing stones at them, destroying their head, bleeding it, the brain comes out, they're suffering to death. They're experiencing the full scale of evolution screaming in their mind, don't do this, it, it hurts you, when they can't do nothing about it. You want to be the one who causes that? Thank you! I don't know what's wrong with me today or what's, what was wrong with me the other days. I want to consider the latter. Can't promise anything though. Electricity, yeah. We need to make some uh, frames. I'm working some frames. A framework. Mm. Steel. I need to make some more steel. I think we are low on steel by now. 28 is low. 56 is not so low, but in the direction of. The sun is coming up. The sun, or whatever its name is. Do we have still oxide? Yes. We could make some, but we don't have enough iron. I need to mine more. I need to stockpile on iron so we can make steel. A long-term concern. So, why am I saying this? How I'm treating people? Yeah, that wasn't it's, what, yet again self aggrandizes But um, what I mean is... Um, uh, da -da 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 well, if everybody would treat each other based upon no fantasy pollution, but based upon we want to coexist properly, and I'm not sure if what I just heard there I heard right, but let's move on. Um, <laughs> then the world would be better. And the guy who said that to you, he might not have the justification to say that to you. But maybe someone else did them wrong, and now they're pissed, and that energy has to go somewhere, and it didn't have to go in your direction. And you don't have to be the Jesus who takes that. But didn't Jesus tell you not just to have faith in him, but to follow his example? Why are you not doing that? You must have a reason, and I'm curious, what is your reason? Why do you not follow Jesus' example when you're following Jesus? And no, you shouldn't follow Mohammed's example. Because Mohammed, I believe, was... I mean, maybe he was... Maybe some teachings made sense, but I'm not going to go there. But the point is, I think uh, if you follow that, then it's... I mean, have you have you noticed how much Muslims, when they, when they talk about something, often raise their right hand with a finger you know, the finger of Muhammad basically. Now behold, I'm speaking something important to you, so you will submit to the power that I wield as part of this giant network of people who believe things for no good reason. Um, this, um, this is more like, uh, more in the direction of power. I mean, so let's say this. Jesus was more like the submissive type. He was submitting to, their f to his fellow men and making the, making the world a better place from that angle. And I think that the more uh, the Mohammed angle, if we were try to be like him, uh, that would be well. First of all, they, would they try that? Mohammed is the most best person ever. Yeah, maybe or maybe the fuck not. The point is, I think I think that this belief that you're holding there is probably distorting your in information processing matrix in your head at least slightly. We need some coal. Um. Okay, whatever, and trying to be nice, and uh, that's a good thing. And uh, the world needs more truth. It needs more truth. The exclamation point needs to be less loud than the question mark. And the world is so full of lies. And people have learned, if I lie, I get my way. The politicians have learned that, the media have learned that, and I don't believe any of that anymore. Now you might say, that's unreasonable. Why? What can I do? I can make, I can vote once every four years. One little cross that I actually make, yes. Um, so how do you make them without being informed? Well, I'm loosely informed and that's enough. I don't have to also um, follow the news because certainly they are not telling you the truth. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But certainly, I mean, let's say this. Let's say you have something terribly important to say. Then you will do what I just do. You will pause and you will turn to your audience and you will speak to them and then you will continue because you feel like you have to get that shit out. Now let's flip that coin. Let's look at what a news station is doing. They have to get something terribly important out. And now they have to find desperately something to get out. Do you, does, that strike the, does that strike you to be a good truth conveyance principle? 
When someone has to speak, they just don't know what, instead of having to say something and desperately looking for a way to get it out. And that's, you know, that's one of the reasons that I hate mankind. I mean, see, again, I don't hate my fellow man, I treat them well, and I don't hate them secretly, only sometimes. But um, not only won't I let it out, which seems like a lie, but you know, would it make the world a better place? I can't be sh I can't be sure of my beliefs. So if I would make the world a worse place, by 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 foundation of the beliefs that I have, which then lead to me uh, being abhorred by mankind, um, then that would not be the right approach. I must say skeptically, even of these strong beliefs that I'm supposedly reasonably holding. See, my question marks is louder than my exclamation point, and I'm saying that with a loud exclamation point. But. Am I sure about this? Hmm, I don't know. Hmm... Where was I? I lost track. Three, you can make... Four. And we need to make some... We need some steel. Uh, we have to have some steel. To make those foundations. Seriously, sometimes the hands switch when I pick something up and sometimes they don't. And I believe there's a pattern, there's a system. I don't doubt that. But for some reason I couldn't yet wrap my head around it. See, there's also possibly a mental flaw that I should work on, but not necessarily, because there's not so much within me that is within me in the in, in interaction with the world, so that's not quite the same. Um, uh, and if that wouldn't auto switch ever, then I believe I would be able to cope because I could always sleepwalk. This is the hand that I have, so I have to hit the button now with that, that I picked something up. So I think it should be optional. I think it should be optional whether that switches. Then I could turn that off and I could just sleepwalk because I haven't learned yet how that really, you know, turn that off. Power is high enough now and I su suspect we will get a storm very soon. Because that's kind, of, that's kind of my luck, you know, I just burned a whole stack of coal, 21 degrees. What are our plants doing? Towards seeding, still thriving, water is still at 3 liters like before. Um, you might think that the water is infinite, but it's not. If you have a long row of these and put a 10 liter bottle here, then you will... Oh, well, it would probably be enough, but still, that will take more water then. But possibly only because of the pipes. The plants really take so ridiculously little, I wonder if they will eventually rebalance that accordingly. So, we, uh, thirst is a problem, we have to deal with that. And I need some steel sheets to expand. Do I have steel sheets? I do not. Damn. Hunger critical. Hunger critical. Still walking around with my uh, oxygen. I need to make some oxygen. This is my oxygen maker machine. And look. Oh, overpressure. Bad. Yeah, that was not the best way to solve it. I should have done that inside, what the fuck? Bit confused. And now there's some crap in there that I have to get rid of. Ah, this is the Hellfire Punishment Sea! A god is announcing it for all the things that you said! Oh, look at that, everything's broken! Dude! Your god can suck my ass and eat my shit and munch on it and, and, and so forth and I will give him actually some more of that because I don't believe in that crap. I do not. Now how do we get out of this? Uh, unable to force, door bolts are locked. Hmm. What is my atmosphere in here? Not good. Um, I have actually a big fucking problem. Hmm. Hmm. These are broken. That is broken. The battery is gone. The cables are burnt. That, okay. Now I have to get into the station and that will be kinda sucky. This 
particularly since I can't see anything. Where's my purification mechanism? Oh, don't make so many, man! Stop! Oh, I thought it was broken. No, it's just a distorted air. 54 degrees. Uh, <clears throat> um, let's turn this on and purify the air somewhat. Then I need two act defense, please, rather urgently. I can't make those. I can, of course, take some of those I already have. Copper. Uh, the Buddhist concept of non-detachment is actually very good. You know, might, you might think that someone who doesn't care too much if one of their relatives die, um, like me, oh, how abhorrent. That's the thing, you people are children. You are all children, you have to understand that. And there are some minds which are just much more advanced, and I'm sorry if that feels wrong if I say that, and if, if the, this kind of speech is unwelcome, but if something is true and is relevant and should be said, then then I'm fucking saying it. Anyway, um, the point is, um, non-attachment uh, implies... Uh, I mean, let's look at it the, like following. Do you agree that possibly one of the best ways to implement the concept of the golden rule is thy will be done? Because ultimately we... Oh, no battery? Did my batteries burn out? Oh, all my batteries are gone. That's a problem. Um, small battery, need gold, have gold, good, have energy, okay, little catastrophe here, but it's fun, I mean, if I get through this, that is, how do I charge them, is the charger still working, is it still in charge, uh -huh. oh, it's even gone, oh, fuck me, that's a major catastrophe, let's eat first, open the helmet, can I actually breathe in here, do I have still my tablet, yes, uh, pollution might be low enough. Temperature high. Heat though isn't. Man. I hope I don't have to toss this nice video with all the ranting just because I did this one stupid thing. Because that would be sad. The world should hear these things. I disagree. Well, you're not the world. But I would be the one who tell the world about them. Oh, so you will be actually li telling lies then, because your abstractions will not be incorrect. I uh, will not be correct. So, iron. Do I have iron? Yes. Therefore, it will implicitly be a lie. Specifically, particularly since you are um, would be um, trying to bend the people's belief in a certain direction instead of saying, "Yeah, I heard this thing," you know. No, you would try to rile them up, and. Um, but, you know, you can... you do you. I believe in a good future for all of us. Or rather for those who will be alive in the end. And I strive to make the most of my life until then. Mm, where do I put the charger? Here, near, to the, near the batteries. That makes sense. Ah. Really? Yes, really. Cables. Why am I still... Ah, yeah, because I haven't eaten yet. Temperature high. Damn the dam. Well, I'm breathing still, but... Um, this thing needs to be evacuated or rather tossed away. Maybe I should just not bother with that thing. And make a new one. If I can... That's enough of that. Actually, I could have tossed that out here like this, but I, I guess I wasn't sure how five would fly. Yeah, that shall be enough for now. I know I could use technology to fix this problem, but um, oh wait, this this is rather hot, isn't it? Twenty-three degrees. Why is it only twenty-three degrees? 
because in here there's still lots of gas with that temperature. Good thing then I vented that out. I didn't vent that out. Yeah, this concept of non-attachment, let's talk about that for a moment, or rather about the problem of um, not having any electricity to charge my batteries with. Thy will be done. I mean, if we, if everybody submits to everybody, you, you know, the, the concept thy will be done is rather known from God, you know? You say to God, thy will be done, Lord. Uh, uh, and, <laughs> well, um, but why, why shouldn't we also say that to each other? Because we're unworthy? Well, then steer it a little, but otherwise say yes to it. Say yes to each other, unconditionally. I mean, to a degree, right? There's some things that are clearly wrong, and but but then you have to distinguish is it uh, is it their personal life or does it affect the rest of the world you know that's what you have to distinguish them um they will be done so the golden rule which implies that you have to write abstraction you, that you're abstracting correctly what you're doing or not doing to the other guy uh, are you using the correct abstraction when implementing the golden rule and so ultimately what that comes down to is you want to not do wrong to the other right and that implies that you want to do what the other wants uh, at least within reason and that is thy will be done now if thy will be done is what you want to go for then what if the other person wants to be free but you you are clingy you need them you need them emotionally you're deeply emotionally dependent on them See, isn't that fucking mind-blowing? I mean, if you're e deeply emotionally dependent on someone else, then for them to live up to the concept that they will be done in your regards, they cannot leave. You are dependent on them. They are now integral to your life. You have cost them their freedom. How is that not wrong? And uh, therefore, coexisting in a positive, in a non-negative way, or positive if possible, this uh, can uh, this would uh, then uh, lead to non-attachment. Also, this injecting the question mark into every every exclamation point pixel in your head, and um, this non-attachment thing means then also it can react to situations like this now. A bit karma. I mean, I know I curse, but it's not like I'm kicking my computer off the table or something. But okay, by the way, when people do that. I mean, and, and when it's one of those rare occasions when it's not fake <clears throat> uh, for internet points, though I do find those entertaining, but I rather, I mean, the, uh, there's one component in those videos. <clears throat> uh, you find those videos entertaining sometimes, even though you hopefully pity those people too for that reaction and for the loss of their hardware. Um, because you believe it's true. Now, if that would not be true, but you enjoy because it is true, even though it's not, then the fact that it may, might, may, uh, it might not be true would certainly rain on your parade, right? And so whenever I watch such a video, I can't really enjoy that anymore. Uh, I mean, take, I mean, there's some pity, pity component, but there's also a joy component, and I can do both. Um, why would you? I mean, then where's my uh, table saw? Ah, oh, this thing doesn't have power yet. Knew there was something. Um, how did I get to that? Well, uh, that usually happens <coughs> when they are in an online fight against others. So when their will kind of touches the other person's will directly, or rather by means of their, the form that they give the immediate universe situation. And um, then uh, this, uh, this anger that they experience, some of the reasons are, of course, the immediate will confrontation. So you kind of feel like you have someone to blame, but you can't reach out to them. Uh, so but anyway, you have. If I if I lose the game here, it's not so emotional than if I shoot someone and then they kill me or I die for some stupid reason in the game. Um, another component is possibly that they have leaned in themselves too far out of the window when they use them wi their will to manifest the form of reality. And then this comes back to them by means of, I don't know, self-realization on a level that they can't really know. And this then gives them this intense confrontation with, this is the emotion that you have, now suffer it, or whatever. Do I still have an extra uh, APC? I think so. Yep, nice. Because I think I can't make those yet because they need invar. Would have been a problem, but I could have just run the airlock without one. Yeah, uh, the polka dance. Da -da, da -da.
Come on, no, this is one of the more hilarious uh, stationary bugs. Will this stop anytime soon? I thought it stopped after a while. Apparently, I, I thought wrong. <laughs> Needs to be wired up again. Maybe I want to put up the glass while I'm doing this. Wherever it might be by now. Oh, the airlock is programmed. What the fuck? It's programmed properly and realizes that it doesn't know its current situation and will thus be rather careful about its decision making. Like my custom programmed airlock is on the moon, that is in one of the videos. That is where I say thorough introduction to MIPS and it is thorough, it's uh, good stuff. But I've learned some concepts still uh, since and I don't know what's happening. Ah, it's depressurizing. But it can't do that because the vents are not there. So we have to make another airlock chip because these are dead and the airlock chip is react is uh, working with um, with the absolute identity of the object in the world and that object is lost. So really a major catastrophe here, yeah, but I think we will cope. Uh, God punish you. Fuck your god and fuck him in the ass. I don't fucking care about that. I mean, if you, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that to be intrusive, but as a defense, the moment you step over my line, I say, there's acid, there's fire, there is eternal torture here for you. Don't step over my fucking line. Do not. And I never want to step over yours, if possible. Alright, oh, that was the wrong cable. And I need more cables. Damn. Uh... Did I already have the active vent selected? I did not. Copper. How many would it make? I'm checking preemptively because I know myself. Uh, okay, this thing, how, how purified is there and how cool is it? I can open my helmet, turn off this thing. We can swap out the... T did I, do I have a tank somewhere? I did have... Oh god, where's my tank? There it is. And when I say, oh god, I don't mean it. I would say like, oh god, oh shit, that kind of thing. It's just an expletive. It's just an exclamation, an uh, expression of... Um, it doesn't matter really, I guess. Basically I'm saying, oh, all containing set, whatever that set might be. Only that doesn't sound as good as, oh shit. Glass is probably damaged, right? It's not? Oh, huh, good. Yeah, I need a new air chip. Advance, please.
Ah, yeah, right. Okay, I have to do that from within. Let's do this then. Oh, wait, I need two. Right. One for the wall. These should be ready. And now I need a label. I don't need the label, really. I could just, like I did in the first video, cut off this thing and cut off that thing. And all that remains must be the outer ones. And then I reattach them. The remaining ones here are then the inner ones. And then I can do that, yes. Oh, I had cables. But um, hydration we have... Uh, yeah, hydration is really a thing. But I still have a bottle somewhere. Not a problem. And out there we have 20 liters of water. Still to be delivered here. What a ridiculous video this has become, right? But I love it. I mean, the things that I'm saying here, I, it's, it's, it's good that I get this shit out. Hey, what's happening? Aha, uh -huh, I must have misclicked. I need um, a labeler. Labeler takes iron and gold. Yeah, one thing that I would like to do MIPS at one point in time is uh, whenever the manufacturer is done producing whatever it has been producing, like when it's, when, whenever it's currently not producing, uh, when uh, then it should turn off automatically. Uh, I mean, of course, there has to be some, some if clauses there, but um, in principle, you know, thing is done, I don't need it anymore, so I turn it off manually. Why should I turn that off manually? I can teach the computer to do that. And every time I do that, I feel like my will has become a slight bit more free. And even though the amount of freedom that I achieved there might be completely minor, the aspect of my will having been freed itself, that might actually be the reason, the strong reason. I mean, everybody that everything, uh, everything that everybody does has multiple reasons, I guess. I mean, look at here, the mouse, I'm drawing a rectangle, there's an equalizer, slider, 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 there's the equalizer, and um, um, when you do something, they will make it for this, that, whatever reason, that every slider will be set to some degree, many to zero, some to full, some to half, you know, that's how that works. You don't do something for this reason, you do something for multiple reasons, usually. Ah. Uh, uh, no, I don't want to waste steel on that because we can still quite cope with these. If there were gold within. Yeah, I think non-attachment is a really interesting concept. Uh, that's what the Buddhists do, you know? I mean, sometimes I reflect, what if I would lose my computer, my account, my this, my that, and so forth. And then, of course, I dislike that, but I try to take my will out of this experience in my mind. I'm trying to just look at what's happening there and thus suffering it, exposing myself to it until it's gone. Because then, um, I mean, then if it would eventually happen, I, I can cope with it, you know? I, uh, at least that's what I think. I have done that uh, many times in my life regarding many uh, pot potential losses and, um, well, that gives me peace of mind. Yeah, that's a beta problem, but not significant, so I play beta. This is the beta version of Station Years. Very playable, isn't it? Uh, labeler. Do I have it? Yes, I do. Does it have a battery? Power critical. No, it doesn't. And we need another battery charger, of the small kind, I guess. In the airlock, I'd like to have one there. Because it was very nice. Oh, <laughs> right. Thin air, doesn't work. Did I pick up that glass? God damn it. I'm so disoriented. Mine is all over the place. 42 degrees, damn it. Okay, they have died. One has survived. Interesting, let's assume for a second that these were all the plants that we have. We will still make it. So hold R and delete that. Uh, oh, only two? Wow, okay. 
driving? Yeah, they don't know yet what environment they're living in. <laughs> like children don't. Hey, wait. Why is this no longer... Oh, because this is not... Ah, I was depolluting the environment this whole time. Not. Ah, yeah. That's what you get from all that panic and all the doing ten things at once. Oh, but, I mean, the things that I said, however convoluted, however chaotic, I mean, profound as they were sometimes, and um, that's speeches that people give and prepare for and write down, and I'm playing stationers and given that meanwhile, so, of course, my playing and my speech is confused. See, it's gone, confusing the speech to make the... You and your don't intrude upon me, okay? And that's what you do when you try to make convince me of that shit. But it's gonna save you! And, oh, you're not right, that's what I wanted to talk about earlier. With the infectious disease. It, the moment, and with the guilt, you know? Don't uh, hate the sin. Uh, I don't hate the sinner, I hate the sin. If someone wants to infect me with their religion, then I hate the sin. But I also hate the sinner. Because, at some point, the one infected with the disease becomes the disease. That is the case in, that is the case in the case of religion. In the case of, um... An infectious disease that you have, it is only the case when those people don't give a fuck and actually intentionally infect you, or, you know, but uh, otherwise they're just the victims of it. So I hate the sin, but not the sinner, even if they infect me. But the, um, uh, you know, the religious the infectant, infectee, infector, I hate them. So all of you who do that, just know it. I hate you. I hate you, I hate you, I really truly hate you. Because the world, I mean, I made it sufficiently clear. If it's not clear to you after watching this video, then I am innocent enough to say, okay, I have done my dues to make that clear. Is the airlock operational? It is not. We need the labeler still. We have the labeler somewhere. Man, am I confused. It doesn't have battery. No. Is the battery charged by now? Yes, and then I thought of the battery charger in the airlock. That I haven't yet wired up. Not the optimal amount of keystrokes, but who gives a fuck? So, glass. Alloc chip is in there. Everything has been named. We need some battery buffer in here. And uh, some large battery too. Let's make two large batteries. Large, not that large. Two gold. Uh oh. This will make, would make three, so I have to stop them. So let's look at the oxygen tank. This one is kind of empty. Aha. Yeah, let's not take it to uh, Fate's Tale just now. Wait, what's happening here? Yeah? I have too many batteries at work. In work, in the works. My own, for example, ran out. Good thing that it's not so fatal right now. 
Man, the amount of blunders I've done, even though we're on Vulcan, means we have quite a stable base already. On stationary difficulty, behold the size of my beep! Beeped out. Yeah, by about that. When someone in uh, in a film says fuck, and then someone uh, in a YouTube video quotes um, several film snippets of that film and of other films, but in those snippets then, the word fuck has been beeped out. Seriously, that's all I say to that. This whole beeping out fuck, it should be gone. It just should be gone. I know I'm saying fuck a lot here, but I'm, I don't know, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> and um, also, I, uh, I'm kind of, my mind is occupied, you know? Quite occupied with stuff. I'm not in really focused on a communication situation. So this is me with say fuck all the time. Yes, Mr. Armchair Psychologist, that's what it means. Psychoanalyze me. Put me into a prison of your fantasy. Because I do not sense that at all, as refined as my perception of other people's will is. Battery is charging. Ah, uh, that can actually be done over here. 30, 31, good. The battery charger on the wall, do we have cables? Okay, I think we can now start the airlock again. I will now save, because if I just fumble this, which I normally wouldn't, um, I mean, basically I could already have reloaded after this fumble earlier. Is this going down? Yes, I should actually have some charged battery with me. Um, then I will reload, because that's just not me. That's not how I would play this. I wouldn't lose it this hard. <clears throat> I think we can say that if you listen to all the things I said in this video and actually listened to them um, I'm not saying agreeing, I'm saying let it actually sink into your information matrix in your head and let it run through your processor and then whatever is the outcome is the outcome. That's what I mean. If you have done that and you were not considerably offended, then I think we can say you're an adult. Otherwise, not. Did we just have an overlay? Uh, they recently changed something about console displays. Uh, you can also see that with um, the thing not opening and closing. I think that's related. Uh, maybe that's, that's why there's a bug here. Airlock vent inner, exterior. Airlock vent outer, exterior. Inner, interior. Outer, exterior. Inner, interior. Alright, we have an airlock. We have an airlock. Ah, so, hydration critical. Let's deal with that then immediately. Before we do anything else, except if there's something that needs our attention. Purification, still going. Yeah, and uh, you know, if I think that um, God will eventually arrive among us, then <laughs> um, why would I think so? Um, uh, that's again in the territory of preaching, but um, I think, I mean, maybe we should talk about how I think God actually created the universe, what the concept is, the yin-yang algorithm, you know? Is it, is it working? It's not. Why is it not working? This thing is... I... Why is it not working? What's the pressure in here? Non-zero. Constantly we have some air coming in. Is there some... something... Open? Open? Could have been maybe that one of these is open. I mean, I don't think that can happen in your inventory, but I'm just saying. What? What's the reason? Why is there some air coming in here? Some gas? Do we have constant pollution of our station by some effect? Oh no, stupid me. Pressurize. This thing's actually pumping in. And the disc is now out there. Crap. Okay, not bad. Not a problem. 
Okay, let's analyze this. We have 20 liters of water here. These can take 22, uh, 220 liters, so we're safe by turning this on. I just don't know if it does anything. It does, so it just needs to be part of this thing, which is then powered by this thing. That is my assumption. Now we have the water in here soon, all the 20 liters. And then we can suck the whole entire 20 liters out of this pipe, which is insulated unrealistically as in no matter how hot or cold out here it gets, it will keep its inner temperature and I like that. Please gamify it to some degree, thank you. <clears throat> um, we can suck that whole pipe dry over days just by drinking and that is an efficient use of buying bulk water from a trader. And I've never done it like this. Cool. Oh, yeah, that died too. I guess. Another active event is required. Um, well, the th what's it? Okay, let's think about um, the atheists about among you and the theists among you and the religious among you. Uh, let's think about God. I I yes, including the atheists. Because... Why would I? Ah, uh, wait. Um, sorry, I interrupted. The game is kind of more important because its simulation is heartless. You have a heart, therefore you can forgive me. It's particularly since I am dealing with circumstances. Oxygen low. Oxygen critical. Let's fix that airlock configuration. You might think this game is not for you because you have to juggle too ma so many things at the same time, but that is not true. First of all, all my talking between is confusing me, I said that. And second of all, this is hard difficulty. If you're playing on easy difficulty, then you can tackle things in a more, much more relaxed pace. I mean, this is the best, best game ever made. This is... Uh, my, my hours on this thing are skyrocketing. Steam is uh, claiming a thousand, I'd rather be at almost 800 maybe. Uh, has the situation been resolved? Yes. Uh, low pressure. Low pun. Um, yeah, the, actually an atheist would say, yeah, but why even think about God? I mean, just because someone came up with that, and that's a good reason. Why, uh, are they atheists? No, they're not atheists, they're just people. The theists are atheists, but atheists, why should they be called atheists? They're just people who don't have a belief, and they don't have to say that they don't have a belief just because for some stupid reason it became the fucking norm. So why do I object to people having a belief when I'm a theist myself? Because I'm convinced they're all doing it wrong. In other words, I don't think they're actually believing in God. And I also don't really believe in God, I just believe that there is one. That's not the same thing. Belief in means, I have faith, no? it's up then, it will protect me. No, I think that God is actually a cold motherfucker, because he has to be, because to implement the cosmos, to implement the cosmos, uh, it's a technological uh, miracle for God, yes. God has to go through the hardest possible ever challenge to make the cosmos happen. It's not that he can sit there on his throne and, oh, the universe is doing well, let me guess, uh, there, oh, there's some guy hanging from a rooftop, wait, let me just push the ladder a little bit, yeah, okay, ah, back to watching everybody suffer and die. <laughs> You think that God, what God is like, I mean, how can you be a theist and at the same time believe that God is omnipotent? Well, they would say, well, he wants us to, uh, to find the solutions ourselves, you know, it's free will and he doesn't want to interfere with that. But then uh, the atheist will argue, okay, let's say this, uh, you want everybody to be free, all right? That's why you act in this way and you let them their free will. Now we see someone being raped. Would you say that the person being raped is currently experiencing and exercising their free will? Probably not, because by definition they're not. Therefore what's happening there is wrong. Therefore you shall interfere. Thank you. So is God interfering with rape? No, he's not. So could he or couldn't he? Interesting problem, no? Can he not interfere with rape? If he can, why doesn't he? Is it because it's the karma of the person? I mean, ultimately, uh, I believe that a god is just bound by logical laws. Uh, and, um, yeah, I mean, hmm. I mean, if you can imagine another consciousness, then it's still just imaginary. How do you make that shit real? How would God make another consciousness real? What is consciousness even? I believe, ultimately, I have thought about this for, for decades, really. And um, my only answer is, it just is. That's the foundation of all things. 
the unity of consciousness, will, perception, the I am. That is the foundation of all things. And therefore, to make a human being, what, what God has to give to us is that. He has to give at least a part of that. And, um, but how do you give that when your hands are that? When the butter that you want to hand would melt in your hands, when it would just be reabsorbed? How do you do that? Well, he has to obviously invert the flow direction. See, let's imagine that God is a circle. Running in a circle, and I, round and round it goes. What is he perceiving? Nothing. He is perceiving only that he is perceiving. He is perceiving perception, perception, but he is I, I am. That is that what he's experiencing. Maybe he's even not experiencing that, because maybe he might not be. Uh, might, maybe he is only experiencing that when he's kind of abstracting it, when he's kind of thinking I am. Um, and what does abstraction then mean? Well, and it, that might actually be the way it works in the human brain too, but who knows? Um, battery. Um, I think of uh, the soul, so to speak, I don't really believe in souls, there's the cosmos period, but the cosmos is made of consciousness, um, <clears throat> is what I think. Um, when the soul is dreaming, it is like a circular, uh, circular kaleidoscope. It's like a, a circular oscilloscope. You know, an oscilloscope is a horizontal line that goes up and down, uh, displaying some data that's coming in, jumping around, stuff like that. <clears throat> Um, but uh, the circular type is just going round and round in circles and that is what I imagine the soul to look like. That is how I imagine the soul. And when the soul is not currently in a dream, so it is excited and it's looking at itself having this form, whatever that looks like from the inside, probably a total trip because you must realize that soul, I'm not saying is, but would be. Are you willing to consider concept or are you trying to be a religious atheist, motherfucker? Well, I feel I consider that because it's interesting. No, that that topic is magically not interesting to me, but I'm intellectually honest. This is intelle magically not interesting to me. <laughs> You're not intellectually honest. That is all that is. But I can tell you why that is. Because you have been done wrong. Done wrong has been done to you by the religion, which infests the world. And so you're allergic to that. So you're not even willing to consider that there might be a God. Because in you, then you, because your mind is impure, less pure than my mind is. Then you would implicitly say a little bit the other guy might be right or not. But I can say maybe there's a God, but everybody's wrong about him. Isn't that a simple concept? Maybe there is a God, but everybody's wrong about him? Why can't you think that concept and, and, and work with that concept? Man, you really have to clean up your fucking minds. Be like God, or be like Jesus, or be like the most aware person ever in existence. Why not? I mean, seriously, everything ever that you experience is not the world around you, it's not, apartment, it's not your apartment, it's not your body, it's your brain. You're experiencing your mind. Why is, that not the, why, is that not, why is that not the highest priority front that you work on? Do you have the justification for that? Because that you do need to justify. You need to justify yourself for not working on that front, for not working on your mind. Why would you try to change anything ever about the world, when the one experiencing it is possibly mistaken about it? Is that thing still on? And I mean uh, the pump out there, <laughs> not the microphone. Um, it's empty? Is 17 liters only? Oh right, because something was absorbed by the bottle filler, of course. Because it's still turned on. Should have turned it on for the experiment. Uh, should have turned it off for the experiment. Often I would say on or off, or yes or no, or something like that. I have seen that in my videos when I was explaining something exact opposite of what I mean. But I hope that the context gives away what I mean. Because I'm not going to do those again. Or this one. Still recording. Hard disk space, let's see that. 60 gigabytes. Yep, I guess we covered. Uh, oh, now I can murder it. We have to consider growing food at some point, but that's not a high priority. I wanted to make some wind turbines. I have. I have to make some foundations. Did I weld them? Yes, I did. Did I put up the pearl turbines? No, I didn't. I have to make some cables. So, a circular kaleidoscope. So, so, what does God experience when he's basically not using his kaleidoscope, when he's just sitting still? 
and pro he's probably perceiving that which is in that moment and what is in that moment is nothing nothing or maybe rather a formless void of no specific size if size is even a concept in that moment because void probably also means devoid of a meaning no meaning even no meaning Huh? Not just a thing that has these or those aspects, which are all turned to undefined, but no, meaning itself doesn't exist. There's no meaning. Now, if he starts a dream, then meaning itself would emerge. Because, you know, when you think about God, you have to think on such fundamental levels. If you're not willing to do that, then, um, I mean, if you might eventually get there, con congratulations. But if you're not willing to get there, then... Uh, then you're not a theist, you're just, I don't know, a programmed stupid robot doll who's running with the current of the world. Uh, now that I've insulted you sufficiently once more, without actually intending so, but also not giving a fuck, um, what do I... Um, this? So let's uh, think about the concept of time for a moment. I said there's... I, my conviction is there's only this moment, and this moment is alive. I mean, every. I mean, if you think about it, it, it can make sense. It's not like no, that doesn't work because wh why would it not work? Yeah, because of relativity. You know, the time in the Andromeda galaxy is the same as here, maybe the sp sp speed of time. But the speed in between, you know, when you're fast uh, spaceship. Uh, okay, okay. Now you have said all these things. How are they relevant to this being the one moment? But that would be then their perspective of the... Yeah, it would be their perspective of the one moment. Now, you have never in your whole life, seriously, all of you who believe that there is truly a tomorrow, I mean, of course, the sun keeps circling, the earth keeps turning, oh, right, the earth keeps turning. Um, of course, there's a tomorrow, but what is tomorrow? Tomorrow is when today has run through its algorithm and has arrived there. Whatever influence we will, whatever impulses are free, I believe we truly have free will, and this means there is true guilt, motherfucker, uh, that uh, whatever impulses our free wills have given this thing, overall, the overall grand scheme of things, there is going to be a tomorrow, because Earth keeps turning, and that is what, what how time works, and so how did time work at the beginning of the universe? Well, in just the same way, and how was it sparked by the will, making the choice, I want to do shit, you know? And that is also something I cannot explain. I don't have a concept for yet, and maybe it can actually never be known, not even by God, who knows. Maybe when God thinks about his will, then that's actually, maybe that's actually what happens. Maybe that's all existence is. God existing and thinking about himself. You know? Anyway, um, um, when you, now I've lost track because high energy statement that needs to rinse and repeat in your head for a while. Uh, what is the next move? Wind turbines, heavy cables. We need some electricity in here. Or rather, electrical energy. How much will this make? Let's make all of them. And we have to go mining, of course. Do we have some dire needs right now? Oxygen is looking all right. I have two canisters here. I need to analyze what those are doing. Okay. Okay. All right. So we have a full canister. And we have, we have one that is currently kind of irrelevant, so let's um, stuff it in there and prepare it, so in the case of an emergency or urgency, you can just go there. These bottles, you can't see them really. <laughs> uh, bup, bup, bup. Where is my there? It is. Wait, is it? No, it's still charging. Energy connection, okay. <sighs> yeah, and then he would um, uh, make a decision, and uh, maybe, uh, maybe this will. This existence, this I am, this consciousness can ultimately not be known. Maybe even God Himself cannot know Himself. Maybe this existence is really just holy. It is, and it is itself holy. It's not a child of this holiness and has to look up to it and be like, Oh, I'm holy, but I can't. No, he, he would be holy himself. But maybe that's really what it is. I mean, that something exists at all. Isn't that mind-blowing? But then again, if you think about it hard enough, you get kind of a sense in your mind, but something has to exist. 
And I believe that in that moment then you're kind of touching the holy without realizing it. Uh, wind turbines, wherever my airlock might be. Ah, oops, the oops. Filters. Little reminder. Yeah, so how does time then begin? Right, because whenever a good dream of God begins, that is because he, however he does that, makes the decision. Maybe, I mean, let's think about it like this. How long is God in this silent state? Would God be in this silent state? I mean, we're just talking concepts, right? How long would God be in the silent state between dreams when his will is not doing anything? When he's just perceiving, well, basically nothing because he has not chosen anything. Because his mind has not been filled with any thought or choice. Because that's all there is, right? At that moment, there's only God's mind. What what would he experience then? Nothing. And um, how long are these phases? How long are they? Undefined. Imagine a cosmos where there is no object ever. How fast are you moving? Okay, let's baffle this a bit further. If there is, if you run your drive now for a moment, propel yourself. However you do that without spelling something, let's ignore all those aspects. And now we turn it off again. Have you gotten faster? I mean, do you not... I mean, it's, of course, there's nothing relative to which you can then relate. But if every reference frame is equal, doesn't this mean that without any reference frame, there is also no speed? But anyway, let's return to the topic. Um... Would God spend any time, or is he maybe, like, maybe he's kind of forced to keep dancing? Whenever he reaches his uh, silent state, then maybe he immediately picks up again whatever immediate means, because it's just un undefined, it doesn't have meaning. But anyway, then he keeps dancing, he does something again. Then falls back into complete... And why would he fall back? Because, um, because if he can have a... Th okay, let's think about it like this. Um, if God, before the universe, is all that exists, then all that he would experience would be himself, would be his mind. And if he shapes his mind, then he would not be looking at his mind doing stuff like I am looking at my mind doing stuff while clicking around in stationers. No, he would be his mind. Something you can possibly kind of quasi experience on Earth if you take enough uh, drugs, you know, ton of mushrooms or whatever, which I'm not suggesting you should do. Um, then... Um, then it would completely I mean his entire existence would then be this chaotic, trippy, holy dream. And um, should he be able to wake up from that? I think so. Sin yeah, I'm the Sin Ferrar. The Ferrari of Sin. Anyway. <laughs> um, sorry for that. Mm. Do I have some more wind turbines to put up? Do I have more cables to put up? I have more cable. Um, okay, so if the situation between dreams is truly undefined, then this means that whatever God does then is necessarily the first thing that ever happened. Nothing has happened before that, because the concept, the concept of before doesn't exist. There is no shape that could hold a memory, a record of that. There is nothing. There's just true formlessness, and that formlessness is him. Or would be him. I don't want to preach. I'm talking concepts. Two. Four. Six. Huh. So, um, how did time begin? Would time then have begun by him making a decision? Let's do something. And I cannot really imagine what that would be like to make this decision for the universe, because the universe, in my uh, model, is an eternal change of God. It's not him dreaming something and waking up from it. But by the way, that is why I believe that so many people believe that the apocalypse means the end of the world, when apocalypse is just Greek for revelation, for the English word revelation, which means when the truth is being revealed. That's what that means. So, um, in, the, in a way, it can mean the end, maybe, but maybe it can also mean that we are finally through the delusion and then we are on the, on the other side of it. 
Or it can mean that God dispels the dream and wakes up again. I think actually that all the world's religions probably sensed some kind of some some notion of truth regarding God. And then when they sensed that, I mean directly, when they had some kind of divine experience, then they knew there is something there. And why would they have had that experience? Possibly because God cannot but eventually wake up from a dream. So it's always built into the dream, inevitably, inevitably by his nature, that he will eventually wake up. And therefore us, the consciousness entities, the instances of himself that he managed to breathe into this dream, while he himself is just this unconscious puzzle thing. Or are we this puzzle, th puzzle thing? Are not we, everybody of us, the whole universe, but from our perspective, without realizing? Are we not God ourselves without realizing everybody? Are we not all the creator and thus responsible on that level? Um, anyway, it's, uh, it's a nice notion to think of your will as truly free, even if it's not. Because certainly that would help you to pull yourself out of the swamp by the hair uh, more than if you believe, ah, I'm limited, I, I'm a thief with only chemical, you know. But have you really exhausted your capacity? You know, basically, you may believe that your will is not truly free because you're an atheist, maybe, and you think that it's all, all somehow some kind of algorithmic chemical thing. But you may, and no rather, you shall believe that the degree to which you have or will ever exhaust the capacity that you will can be at least free within this simulation has not yet been exhausted. I mean, you have not gone there yet. Therefore, you can believe that your will is truly free implicitly, as in keep pushing. Uh, nope. Yes. Uh, yeah, lots more wind turbines. Do we need some trading? We have a little bit of oxide left. We have enough food for now. And we are making our oxygen ourselves by now, I guess? No, we're not. I have to set up lots of plants. So we have to get there. Do I have the water for that? Eh, no. Uh, or oh yes, yes, I still have a bottle here. I need to go mining. That's good, because then I can talk some more. But um, I need to take a short break for number one. On we go. Dum -dum -dum. Oh, okay, we have a power problem. Actually, wh why? Uh, because we don't have enough power, that's why. <laughs> and power is critical to have. We need to go mining. Iron. How's my air filtration doing? 77, 100. And let's prepare one pollutant filter in case there's an emergency again, which we had plenty. And these are nice, you know? I mean, once you get through them, and most importantly, <coughs> also eventually recover as in resources, because we, I blew through quite a few to fix this, <coughs> and then it's a nice thing to have as an experience, because, well, you did it, you, you survived that. Also, it's probably entertaining. Man, it's still too hot in here. What are the plants doing? Creeping? It's thriving? If I would use the plant analyzer, I would probably find out that these guys are now more tolerant to heat. Which is how this works here. You actually have uh, genetics, you know? Except, not extra genetics. That's not how genetics work in reality. <clears throat> but, you know, I could play this for a million years and then I'd see. Uh, okay, is there something in here? No liquid? And no liquid. That's exactly enough liquid. There's 
some corner for garbage. Let's make another mining bed, maybe. <clears throat> uh, actually, we do need to go mining. So let's forget that thing with the additional mining belt. Oxygen-wise, how are we doing? Not as good as I hoped. Also, I'm still breathing that stuff like an idiot. It's time to make the hard suit at some point, huh? <clears throat> Do I need the steel sheets? Not on me, you know. Oh, right, I need an active vent. I can cannot make one for the furnace. Um, well, that's it, what it is then. 37 degrees. Definitely need another AC. I need to mine. And save again. I don't use autosave. Not saying that you shouldn't, absolutely not. It's just because I use beta or main release official or whatever and I don't want uh, to be out of control when it comes to overwriting my save games. Or overwriting isn't even true, there's a history, you know. But uh, still. I mean, back in Deus Ex, I also didn't have auto-saving. And inventory management in Deus Ex, yeah, that warranted some saving. There's some mod, by the way, for the classic Deus Ex, where you have kind of some blue thing that you have to enter. It's kind of a save point, and then it will be saved, and then that save point will be gone, I think? Or, I don't, I'm not sure. But, uh, I mean, you can save as often as you want. For example, when you change the maps, and that's how I abused it sometimes. Um, but that's the thing, you know, when you can't save all the time, then you take that reality more seriously. It's not like, yeah, let's tickle this, kill this guy and see what happens, then reload and do something else. But you, you take it seriously. And if you have experienced it enough, so that you know what that would be like, then you don't need to toy around and you can actually play the reality for real. So, anyway. Safe scanning is not, not really good. Okay, so when God is in a dream, he would experience some some stuff, but he would eventually realize uh, it's a, it's me, it's somehow myself. He would somehow get some kind of notion of I, you know. And um, this would then be a moment when between two like sinus curve like dense of the kaleidoscope, the growth, the constant growth of his consciousness by the me by the process of perception would like glue that together like oil, and then it would flatten. It would become. Now it's uh, now it's uh, simplified, and so he would wake up a little to that circle that he would otherwise be, and that is how he then wakes up. And the last bit of waking up is probably like, maybe that's even why we have orgasms, you know? Uh, maybe that's indeed what that is, except in the mental realm, this complete, you know? And um, I mean, maybe that's uh, maybe that's related. Anyway. Um, that would be the that would be the I am experience, and then when that energy has been sucked up, um, then there's only well I guess the next move, and then you start something new. So, um, and the universe would be his attempt to fuse the dream state and the wake state to create the eternal dream. Why would he do that? Well, because um, if if this turns if this works out then in the end he would have this kind of wake-up experience maybe not to the full scale because they can possibly never ever in eternity be had again ever because it's just no longer possible because the I am doesn't exist anymore that's what I believe 
not in, not in that form. It has been folded to the shape of an eight. Is how I conceptualize this. So it cannot really accidentally undo itself, or when God eventually wakes up among us, which I believe uh, that will actually happen, um, then um, he will not undo the cosmos, but the, 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 the knot will be tied, or it is already tied. I don't know how this works. <clears throat> anyway, so, um, but he would get as, could get as close to that as possible, and the dream system, the universe, would constantly keep creating uh, new shapes and so forth, compatible to the near wake-up situation, and therefore he would, he would kind of an, have an eternal wake-up uh, experience. And why did he create us then? I was out of love, or oh, let's take some others with me, because this eternal new state of mine, you know, I want to share that, haha, let's make them happy. No, I don't think so. I think God is just energy making a choice. And so if he's in a dream and then wakes up, this is kind of a human being born, living, and then dying. And so him turning himself into this uh, the system, which will, I think, uh, eternally create this kind of energy, so he can, like, God's rest, you know, he can just sit on his ass and enjoy his, uh, himself, um, then this implicitly in, in, uh, contains all the things that God is. And what is he? A sequence of dreams. And that's what we are. We are him in a dream. You are a living dream of his. I'm a dream, living dream of his. And is he dreaming us? No, we are him dreaming. That is what I think. And I think that one of us will eventually wake up and maybe we should actually, as a species, maybe try to at least hypothesize that and uh, think about those concepts because maybe that will give a roadmap uh, to someone when they are in that situation to do the right thing or to do it right or to get through that easily or maybe to accelerate the whole process. Um, I mean, we are waking up to consciousness further and further, and the question is how high does this go? There's, you know, my chart thinking. There's a chart 2D, you know, there's a 2D area uh, where you plot two points and then you connect them with a straight line, just you know, making blunt assumptions with two measurements, and then you can go and you extend that line further to the right and to the left. It's a diagonal, okay? Let's say it's ascending. Let's say it uh, depicts consciousness in the, in the world, human consciousness. And that has increased over history, I'm convinced. Um, so, so how high can this go? And how far to the right does this chart go? And how far to the left is there a start? And by the way, there are some people who think that time is eternal. You're wrong. Uh, time cannot be eternal. This moment can be eternal uh, if it has some component of potential formlessness, like I described, but the time itself cannot be eternal. At least it cannot have been eternal before us, before now, because... Listen up. So, think about the universe. Let's assume the universe is infinite, as science does these days, but it's an assumption because they can't be sure. Um, it's based on good evidence, but that evidence is not like, it's not the final word, you know? Um, so, we have three dimensions. You can go to the left, to the right, to the up, to the down, to the forward, to the backward, and there's technically even more than that, because um, when the universe is, when the space is shaped, when it's bent, you know, in the in a gravity well, like Earth or any singular atom or molecule in the cosmos, which also has gravity, obviously. Um, <clears throat> which means that whenever whenever you think you're changing the world slightly because you're causing gravitational uh, artifacts by means of neuronal changes in your brain. Um, so, gravity. Where did I want to go? Too much at once. Time eternal. Yes. Okay. Let's. Uh, Reduce space-time not to a 3D space, but 2D, like a plane. And let's reduce that even further, to a line, like the number line, which starts at minus infinite and goes to up to infinite. And, um, I mean, maybe maybe everybody, everybody has kind of understood the concept of infinity in numbers, kind of, but I guess that most people are kind of applying it wrong in their thinking, uh, instinctively, for whatever reason. Uh, it's rather simple. Infinity just means more than that, or keeps going, or un uh, undefined, but, you know, it means endless, infinite, that's what it even means, infinite, without end. It's not a large number, it's no number, it's not even a number at all, you cannot divide by infinity, it's not, it doesn't have any definition. Or maybe I'm currently talking some bullshit in math, you can do all kinds of things. Anyway, let's return to the concept of time. Um, so we have this number line from minus infinity to plus infinity, in other words, it goes on forever to the right, and it has gone forever to the left, and minus, a negative, means in the past, and plus means in the future. So we're at zero. We're always at zero because there's only this moment. 
hilarious. And um, now you go. Now you go. Can I do something about that? No. But next time I will bring an empty canister. Not to waste all that stuff. Mm. So we can go infinitely to the right, hypothetically. I mean, if the universe doesn't collapse in on itself again. I mean, the current going hypothesis is uh, heat death, you know. This means that every all work that can currently be done by temperature differential will eventually have equaled out and so there will just be uh, some warmth that also keeps out expanding forever. And yeah, that's the hypothesis. So to the right, yeah, we agree it can actually go to the right forever, but to the left, it cannot go on to the left forever. No matter what concept of the universe is true, um, if you want to go to the right forever, guess what? It would take you forever to get there. Right? I mean, if there's something that is infinitely far away from you, then it would take you infinite time to get there. And so it would, ha would have taken us infinite time to get to the moment right now. Any moment that you reach on this chart will be infinitely far away from the start, because the start of time is infinite. There cannot be infinite time. Time has to start. And the universe can also not have been a natural phenomenon. Now, I know, sorry, and I'm preaching at this point, I'm just trying to connect the sentences, uh, or rather the concepts, because the first thing that happens, uh, I mean, okay, let's, okay, that, that maybe it can be a natural phenomenon, but then time would have to, there would have to be a sudden start of it. But time cannot begin, because time starting, that is a change. Any change needs a thing that can change. And also the process of changing. The process of changing needs time. So time cannot have uh, been there forever. And it cannot have begun. I cannot... Uh, it must have begun at some point. Uh, or rather, damn, what I was saying. <laughs> um, so this moment must is forever. And time... Hunger, caution. The, 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 uh, well, form cannot have an infinite past. Time can have an infinite past if the nature of time is there's only this moment and it has a form. But it can also be so formless as to not have any meaning. Hey, we can make a pill. Whoa! Yeah, I should, I know I should take mine, but I won't. No, I don't need any. <laughs> Well, basically, um, if God inevitably wakes up from a dream, then if he makes the universe by means of this dream concept that he is or has or can do, and what else would he do is all he is or has, right? There's nothing else. Then, um, or there would be nothing else, sorry, the, you know, whatever. Then, um, then implicitly, uh, his, whenever he would be kind of slightly awake in there, kind of slightly of aware, slightly aware, then he would also sometimes get the notion that there is something like a wake up, or that there would be something that lures him to be waking up. And you know what? Maybe, the, maybe Jesus actually existed, and maybe Jesus actually performed miracles. Maybe he actually did that. Maybe it was like an anomaly, an, an occurrence in the universe where mind was so awake that it could do God-level things. Maybe that's what actually happened. I'm not saying it did. I'm saying I accept that this may have been so. Um, but then the universe came and say, said, no, you will now be nailed to the cross as punishment for trying to wake up in the wrong direction, motherfucker. Because that is maybe what happened. Yeah, lots of novel thoughts are being had, aren't they? I have a shit ton of these. Thinking outside the box is fun. <laughs> Continues to build only box bases. Am I currently in the box? No. See? Therefore. Okay, so uh, let's say that God t tries to maximize his wake-up orgasm. Hello. No? Or, uh, metaphorically, you know, metaphorical orgasm of waking up. This uh, experience of I am! 
And then the next uh, thing, next thing that happens is, but what am I? And the dream starts over again. All right, <laughs> can never know. Let's say he tries to maximize that, then this goal would have to be to try not to wake up from the dream. Which means that he would have to, like, he has to kind of, I mean, he kind of has to has the wish that there is the dream, but this wish cannot, like, take him with itself, uh, like the trip is taking over, so he drifts into whatever arbitrary direction and then wakes up again, yeah, baby, next round. But instead, um, he has to kind of take his wake consciousness in there, at least the decision to stay dreaming, to stay asleep, to, to maximize the depth of the dream. And the universe, I think, is the implementation of that endeavor, except uh, to the degree that he will actually not wake up from the dream. Even though it's probably iffy, you know, the last moment might be really, what maybe God will, I mean, that if God's will is truly free, then maybe what happens in the end, I mean, maybe this is like the 500th universe he's doing, and every time the wake-up was the absolute orgasm, but he had the true decision in the end, maybe this time I'll keep it. Maybe this time the dream shall be eternal. I don't believe that. I think this is the first one, but it doesn't matter. Um, now how do can, you, can, can you even talk about the first one when between them there's nothing? Well, in the same way that how can you even think about he made the decision to make the universe when when every decision is completely taking place in a complete vacuum, without memory, without emotion, without anything. I don't know, I have no clue. No clue. Really not. Only sometimes when I think about that, I do get some kind of feeling in my head, some tingly feeling that says, HOLY! And I don't fear to think about that. Why should I? I am a mind. Minds act. So wake up. Maybe one of you is actually God and, you, and we're just waiting for you. Maybe one of you is the one who will give all of us eternal life. Maybe it will even happen in our lifetime. And you, you are the one who has to wake up. You. Oh, uh, never mind. Silver, yeah. Don't have too much of that. Neither won't we get any if the mining belt is full. So if you want to, uh, he wants to implement that, then he must somehow take this consciousness uh, into the dream. So his will basically must be dream exist. You know, he must have the will that this dream keeps taking form instead of falling into the formlessness that he would otherwise be. And isn't that what we are all doing? I guess the leap is a bit too fast. Okay. Um, uh, so he has to have the will that the universe is. And the yin-yang algorithm, that is uh, how I think about that. Let's think about the yin-yang. There is this circle, which has two halves. They're looking like, kind of like two fish or whatever, uh, lying together having sex or whatever. And um, then there's an eye in each of these fish and, uh, and they're forming a circle. They're a hole. And how I think about that is, it is the hole uh, that is separated artificially into two halves and they're perceiving each other and their goal must be to make the other half be. And I'm realizing I'm losing this again. So, and then one half, I mean, it's probably very tricky to make, to pull off because it's, well, it's kind of liquid and it and naturally wakes up, but he wants to do that and so he has to stay strong and some part of his might fail and another part might work out and then somehow one, of, one part works out and says, okay, this shall be, shazam, bang. Now we don't have one yin yang in, uh, in structure in that room, we have two and so forth until we have a whole cosmos of that and that happens in, in what time does it take? Well, what, what meaning does ha ha time have in such a cons highly conceptual God situation? Well, I don't know. God, mind, develop like progress, progress speed. Probably instant, and that gives us the Big Bang. The ultimate heat, the ultimate I want you to be. No matter what you want to be, but I want you to be. Big Bang, the heat is love.
And so one of these and uh, halves is then uh, successfully causing more of these structures, or both of them may maybe. Anyway, maybe the love between them is, you know, the will that the other shall be no matter what happens to yourself, because that's what he has to do. That is unconditional love. It has to, um, uh, maybe it's sometimes even in equilibrium and then, um, anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, so there will be more, of, more and more of these and what this does is it produces producers. And these producers produce things that produce light. The light that he consists of. So basically he's turning himself into an infinite light manufacturing machine that he will then eventually experience. And I think our goal must be to be the living will, the unconditional will that the universe is. We must become love as a person. Maybe that is what we are even as beings. And the more we are that as persons, the longer we will live, the better our fate will be. Who knows? Uh, where's the station? I'm kind of, I kind of lost it. Hmm. Well, okay, let's be systematic then. Oh, there it is. Saved by the leads. I was led astray. No, not the opposite. Need a active vent. Because maybe we can actually become this kind of force. The, we, maybe we can we can bleh, maybe we can become the yin, and the universe is the yang. Or I mean, they are symmetric. It doesn't matter who is which. Um, but maybe the universe is kind of the will that we exist, right? And as we can see in nature, if we do it wrong, then we will pollute it. We will not have the resources, we will not hold the balance. We have to hold the balance between the inside and the outside, between the part of us that is the universe and between the part of us that is our self-experience. And um, maybe we will actually become that entity, the infinite light producer and enjoyer, the heaven, the cosmos. Infinite light production and enjoyment machine. That is how I see the universe. And maybe I'm wrong, but my 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 belief, or yeah, well, it's uh, it's tricky whether I would call it a belief because I mean I have observed things, but let's not go there. Um, this worldview, what negative side effects does it have? Well, I'm open to alternatives, so it shouldn't have any. What positive side effects does it have? I want the whole world to become love. And I want to do my part. So, excuse me for having that belief. Drink. Health is at twenty-six percent and counting. Next step, AC. Power critical. What? I, Power low. I, what just happened? I was clicking the right, right mouse button on the screen, drinking, and suddenly I tossed my battery. What's the time? Oh, that's not the reason. I don't. I mean, sometimes I have an hourly thing that starts a program. I'm trying to find out. Anyway, so let's put this thing up. We need to make steel. Do we have enough iron for that? 30 iron here. Some sad amount of iron there. This is not the way to go. I have to hunt for iron specifically. Focused. We need steel. Hey. Yeah, and that's this saying, um, if you do the same thing again and again and again with insanity, it's the definition of insanity, expecting a different outcome. <laughs> that's bullshit. That is bullshit and it's bullshit. And it's also bullshit. See, people, you are so in love with your memes that they bend your mind out of shape and you don't want to face that because it hurts your emotion. Therefore, you want to become even more untruthful and thus poison the world more with your impure minds. I want that to fucking end. Wake up! Become an entity of truth! 
is the only value we have. Truth. Is that so? See? Not the value as that we people are. I'm saying the only value as in a value system. Yeah. So, what is the um, thing in here? Purified enough. Stop. That. Let's fill it up a little. Need to eat. And I want to take a canister with me next time. All oh, right, eat. And eat and eat and eat. So, um, you know, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome is um, wrong for several reasons. Uh, okay, maybe for one, for one key reason, because never uh, any, nothing you do is ever the same. There's always subtle changes. Maybe it's different in a digital world, in a computer, when you're, when you're see, when the program is simple, when there's no multi-threading going on, no timing issues, nothing. But ultimately, there will be a subtle difference, and in reality, there will always be some kind of a difference. So, you know, that saying is invalidated. Let's move on then. Yeah, maybe I'm taking it out of context, and maybe so, but uh, I think it has been too meme horrified that. God damn it, I hate that. I hate it. Man, wake up. When you say something to me, say it because you believe it, not because you were programmed to do, or because it's some kind of kaleidoscopic iteration, uh, artifact of whatever your brain was when you were born, plus all the data that you experienced since then, become the I am in a space-time situation, instead of being some kind of convoluted mess. And I'm trying that too. Promise. Hey, what's this? Uh, didn't I toss that out? So, this and that and this then. What? What? I wanted to make a canister. I don't have iron. That's what happened. Still smelting. What is it smelting? Copper. And now what is smelting? Copper. <laughs> We need iron. You know what? I'm not saying uh, they should subscribe. They should subscribe to my channel, or they shouldn't. I'm not saying upvote or downvote. I'm not saying anything. Do what you want. But um, I really, I would. I mean, if the world were the right in its mind that a video like this one which is probably not really what people want to see here that should lead to subscriptions and not so much the other ones in comparison I mean but I think I'd rather lose people with a video like this well I hope I will upload it because it's not the first time that I do this only sometimes <laughs> yeah I did one like this um, I don't know what exactly I said I touched some of the concepts but I was like too fervent and said some things and then eventually I thought you know I just didn't dare but you know but this time I will just fucking upload it I will upload it hear it and if I won't then you won't hear this promise no I will upload it uh, yeah let's make a pill This is reserve oxygen. I need to mine. We need to check out the plants. They're still alive, unfathomably.
I want to keep some fern around for the greenhouse that I need to make here. God damn it. Okay, I'm being annoyed by guess who? My program. <laughs> Close. So, batteries. I need to charge my batteries. I should have some reserve batteries that are charged. Cannot make those now. What did I want to make? Iron... Uh, canister? What? Did I not just pick this up? What? Did you just see me pick up some iron? I am confused. It didn't just fall through the ground, right? I mean, I've never had that myself, but... I did have iron in here! Now there's nothing! What is happening? A miracle! Hopefully not, because those don't belong here. This is the universe. No miracles for me, thank you. I want my taxes, and I want my my uh, computers, and my logic, and my coexistence to work according to hard rules. The hard rules of whatever that real, the underlying mechanism is. Not some arbitrary wishy-washy shit. Imagine! Imagine that reality would become fantasy. But in ways that, that, that do not follow this strict concept that we have. Where we use technology and all of that. Imagine that. Then all the things that you've learned, all the foundations of your mind, they would be rocked. Basically, this would all slowly start to melt. You would go insane because suddenly you believe that things are possible that are not actually possible or that everything is somehow arbitrary. It's not. Nothing is arbitrary except what we decide. So let's make those decisions beautiful ones. Where is the iron? Damn it. Okay, I... I... I something... I just lost iron here. That's just vanished into nothing. It's probably visible somewhere and I just don't see it. Battery swap. Battery charge. Battery charge. Battery charge. Oxygen. Not enough. That's all right. Should I make some battery? No. Not now. <coughs> I need resources first. Yeah, right. I keep sucking oxygen from the atmosphere. It has fallen down to 68.7%. Um, the pressure in here is decreasing because I keep unleashing my, my waste gas out there. Um, so we need to do something about that. Once we have stronger cooling, I will suck in CO2 from the outside. We need more plants to, to convert the, the, the oxygen. I will now focus on mining. Iron. Oh man, my mining drill is damaged. Hey wait, that's not the right mining drill. No wonder it's damaged. You have to use the heavy one on this planet. Is it on me? It is. Hilarious. I have an extra battery. And this thing I cannot sell anymore. Fuck. Yeah, another word about religion. When you have some re religious thoughts based upon your uh, religious foundations, um, then and you like those, like that thought, basically, then you are, and you basically believe it because of that. Um, you are 
investing yourself emotionally. So if you would eventually realize that this thought was not true, then you might feel a withdrawal. Now imagine what withdrawal you experience when you have put a lifetime of falsehoods in your head. That is also what will really wrap itself around tightly like a muscle, like a cancer, around that core that ultimately made you start with that shit and will not let it out so that you will never suffer, th suffer that withdrawal. That is really, you know, you should really try to clean up your mind. Just clean it up. Do it. Why would I do that? It is already clean. Jesus has said, maybe he has, maybe he has not. Okay, another thing about Jesus. Um, cool thing, by the way. Uh, the following story. Why would God nail himself to the cross so that he can forgive you? Why doesn't he just forgive you? You know? Why would he do that? Well, um, science fiction story-ish thing. Um, lends itself to a short story indeed. But I haven't written it yet or I don't want to, whatever. Um, you can take it if you wish. Though, personally, I only want, on, only want to write stuff that I came up with myself. Anyway. Um, so, why would he do that? Well, God is not a human. He is this energy being which does whatever the fuck and then chooses for whatever reason to create the universe. We don't understand that reason and the Christians also don't. They have been told this is for heaven, blah blah blah, but maybe it's really this energy production system, like I said. Uh, though only then that would be the universe and not heaven. But, you know, maybe the universe is just the first stage and then heaven comes after that, blah blah blah. It, it doesn't matter. The point is, he would not be hu a human. He would not understand what it is to be human. He would have just made the system with the evolution and stuff, which researches itself so that his mind doesn't mingle, so that he doesn't absorb it all back again into himself, so that actually other consciousness can be uh, consciousnesses can be created. But then now <clears throat> he has to maybe he reaches kind of some kind of finalization stage, or maybe he realizes there's some kind of bad things going on in the system. He keeps seeing this like red flash on his radar. What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, that means that someone is suffering incredibly and then dying. Maybe you want to do something about that, God? And maybe that's what happened. You know, eventually he thought, hmm. Or maybe it was part of the plan all along. The point is, at some point he had to find out um, how to take it, uh, how to, you know, take this whole project home. And so then he said, okay, um, now it's time to find out what it is to be human. And then he um, lived through that and then he was then he uh, was hated and killed in the most torturous way because hanging from the cross is uh, constant you have to lift yourself up so that you don't suffocate just from this uh, from the from having this um, uh, to being locked into that position then also supposedly nails being uh, nailed through his wrists and so forth which of, were of course not by what he was what he was hanging from because that would have just plop up so now you're on the ground you're free haha <laughs> no he, that was additional to that um, that he would have then, uh, then he would have upheld his his attempt to love the people, to love them unconditionally to the very end. And then, at some point, then he would have felt it again, this connection to this ultimate being that he is or was. It's waking up to that being again, while still having this uh, uh, love to people, even though they've just tortured him basically to death. And he said, it is accomplished. Maybe that happened. I'm not saying it didn't. I don't believe it, but, you know, maybe it did. Maybe that's what happened. See, I mean, that's also what atheists don't want to think about. Could that be possibly the reason? I mean, there's a nice argument to say, uh, why, why would this call name say what God kill himself that he can forgive us? That's completely nuts. But no, uh, Matt Dillahunty and all the other prominent uh, atheists that I do like, you are biased. You are not pure in your thinking. There are potential concepts by which this can make th can make sense. Of course, this will make your fight that I applaud against the religion in the world weaker because you could not so fervently lean out of the window and say, no, it's not fucking true, you stupid piece of dog shit idiot. I, I'm summarizing. But, um, where's my mind drive? But, um, ultimately, you must return to the truth and the truth is, you don't know. It might be so. Or it might not be so. The truth is, you don't know. I just presented a concept that makes it very, very, very reasonable to uh, this, this concept that a god would sacrifice himself to himself. And also, why would he call himself his son when he is actually himself, blah, blah, blah. All, all that was also just deciphered. There. 
And what about the Holy Spirit? Well, that would be part of his mind that he invested to make the universe, you know, that the spirit substance, so to speak, the Holy Spirit, da da da, it's all connected. See, that all makes sense. I'm not saying I believe that crap, I'm saying it can be made sense of. Yeah. So any Christian out there would probably think, oh, great video. Huh. But then subscribe and board up and shit to counterbalance the others who will have the understandable, yet I don't applaud that reaction. No, choose whatever you want. Yeah, so basically the one of us who might then bake, wake up if my concept of the world is correct, which I hope it is, because that would lead to... I mean, the world makes sense, right? I mean, why breed us in this world and then take us into someone, into one that is completely different and then say, be happy, no, no, you be happy. Does that work? Maybe it does. It can probably be made to happen. Maybe I just, maybe I just pulled a dilla hunty in the hand uh, to did the same thing, you know. Um, yeah, I, I'm not saying he's unreasonable. I'm just saying that most atheists, even the good ones, even the ones who are, I, whose doings I applaud, they have these impurities of reasoning, you know. No, I have enough of that. I need to, uh, need to remember where my station is. Oh, shit. I think it's over yonder. I think wrong. Let's think back. Let's think different. Lee. Damn, I need to take more care. And also my propellant, my jetpack is almost gone. Damn. Fuck, what will I do? What will I do? I wasn't so far away from the base. You know what? I will pull a Nemo. Captain Nemo, you know? When his, uh, when the Nautilus was run aground. And well, what will you do now? I don't know if that was after the Kraken or something. But um, he just said, you know, I will just wait for the flood. And so I will wait for, for the sun. And try not to move too much. Hydration critical. If I can, that is. Jetpack low. Jetpack low. Jetpack low. Ah, there is all right. Found it by silhouette against the horizon. Now I want to regroup before I do anything else. Because getting lost is one of the stupidest ways to lose this game. Yet it happened to me so often. Wave tank critical. Yes, Eliza. Not always, but sometimes, you know. Uh, so we need to make steel. We have a little bit of that here. That's actually a full stack, nicey, nice and nicer, nice and. And then we have some coal there. Need some more iron. We oh my god, we have iron. Didn't even notice that. I'm so in the trance of whatever this is. Generations would speak of. Look at that hilarious fool. We all know now that Mohammed is right. See what he said back there. If they would take that, then if 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 I'm actually completely wrong, and if Mohammed is right. They would sh should still look at this video and think, yeah, maybe he's actually right and what he's doing is reasonable. It's this thinking process and so forth. I mean, he was wrong, all right. And then, according to their beliefs, and therefore he burns in hell. What kind of shit is that? What kind of asshole piece of dog shit God is that who does that? Right? Burning someone eternally in hell? The only way that they can possibly make sense is if it's infrastructurally implied because, well, like, no, I'm God now, saying, well, sorry, then I can't help you. I'm trying, you're reaching out to me, I don't... Uh, sorry, you know, can't do anything. But I don't think that's what would happen. That would be finite, at least. <clears throat> da -da -da. I don't care about that shit. I don't fear hell. There is no hell. There is no heaven. There is only the cosmos. And I hope that we all work on making it heaven. And who knows, maybe that's what it actually is or will be. So, to make steel, 21 degrees, nice. But not fast enough. Um, should I let in some heat? No, the day will come soon. I mean, the sun will return soon. 
<laughs> I was not trying to speak in in, in uh, multiple associations at once now. That was a coincidence. <clears throat> so that's two batches of steel. Let's reserve this mining belt for that. And make a jetpack fuel canister. What will we put into that canister? I would say CO2 is a good idea, since we have so much of that. One, two, three, one, two, oops. Three. All is 50, okay. Again, true faith is... Don't give a fuck. You have heard of the thing, that should be sufficient. Once you die and you need that stuff, you will remember. Remember there was something... Maybe it's even good that we have heard of Jesus, even though maybe it's unreasonable to believe in him. Maybe eventually, maybe eventually it will turn out that he's real. And then it's good to have heard of that, and maybe that's all that was uh, required. But I don't believe in that. Nope. I don't, I don't believe in that. Also, but maybe because I believe so much in the power of the mind, and then in the respective case of my mind. Like, you should believe in the power of your mind. I mean, you should, what is the limits of the powers of your mind? You are your own fantasy, so I guess your fantasy is the limit, man. And I try to imagine that we all have the potential to wake up to be that guy, or at least to live up to it. To live up to being the one who can hold the world on their shoulders with their sanity and truthfulness. That's what we all should be, to hold each other up. Um, steel. I need to make steel. It's night still. But I can just toss some oxide in there. Let's... I need an... Oh, I need an active vent. And I need a jetpack. Jetpack fuel. I can abuse my pollution here, my waste tank for now. Active vent. Seriously, I have so much copper, but... <laughs> So, electricity, what are, how are we doing? Uh, why is there always some pollutant in there? Oh, because my suit is not entirely tight. I believe if this... Oh, this is a hard suit! God damn it, I'm saying we have to get the hard suit? Hmm. Stairs into the camera? Should I program the chip now? No, that's for the next video, not for this one. Hmm. Uh, what is happening? The temperature is okay. What is the pollution doing? A little bit is okay. Can I make the suit any more tight or is it just damaged? Nope, can't do nothing. Oh well. Steel. In other words... Oxide. Why am I still breathing like that? Oh, I need to drink. Health 91? Okay, that's it. That's uh, actually. Ah, uh, damn, I can't do that in the airlock. Okay, let's drink something. Uh, oh, fuck. I just wasted uh, station atmosphere by clicking. Uh, twice and this basically should have exploded there was a lot of oxygen in there ah crap crappity crap and crap um active vent turn on check settings pressure increasing should have opened this maybe temperature increasing let's wait a minute until the sun is higher up and since the temperature is already uh above 300 it needs to be 473.15 for this little door here to not stay closed but we don't have to worry 
because we can pump in hot gas with this and this will then resolve the problem. Let's toss it all in, make a 400 stack. And then we need, we need to put up a stacker anyway. Those little conveniences. Jetpack low. It's 290 degrees Celsius around me. It needs to rise until 330 or 40. Then we can make steel with what we pump in there. What's the mixture? 300, 100. Good. I know the valve is still open. I want to go rather for temperature than for pressure. Heat is still rising. Minus 273.15 and we need at least, oh, well, we need 600k. 600k is 400, it's 330-ish. Wait, that should be enough then. What am I saying? Hey, do we need 600? Do we not need 900? Nine hundred. Oh shit, I might have to toss some oxide in there, however I will manage that. Possibly smacking my suit to bits some more, huh? Still rising? Green light, we have steel. Now we get insulated pipes and can make is one of the first things. Let's leave that open or not. Let's not leave that open. Maybe you need the heat. I have some solar and the low temperature shit. Maybe just keep the temperature. Uh, as one of the first steps, uh, next steps we need to make the AC. Where's that steel that I made? Oh! Oh, this thing was destroyed in the process. Ah, oh, right. There was something, some occurrence, I remember, loosely. The historical records. Tell of this. Shoot! Hey, don't I have a shoot still? I need two. I find it very interesting to think about these uh, simple molecular machines that ev evolution bred, which were not conscious. How do you get from there to consciousness? 
I mean, at what point does consci consciousness emerge? By the way, the concept of emergence itself is interesting. Um, um, let's say you have one H2O molecule. H2, you know, H2 that is water, uh, or H2O is water, you know, otherwise you have just uh, dehydrogen. <laughs> <clears throat> so... But is that, uh, is, is that a drop? How about two then? Three, maybe? When do you get a drop of water? And that's kind of an emergence thing. Like, like it is also an emergence thing when water goes into boiling state, because water is boiling off all the time, you know? At the surface of water, some molecules are flying away, that's what's happened when it boils. <clears throat> that's what we call evaporation. Hunger, caution. Silicon? Don't be silly. I had to go there. <laughs> Need to make plants. Need to cool the station down. Oh. Wait, I have to think about this. So emergence, I mean, then when the water as a whole body gets hot enough, then suddenly we will call it boiling. There is some rule for that that I currently don't have in mind. It's something about, I don't know, gas creation within the body or something? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't know how that works exactly. <clears throat> um, okay, this would have to be over here and that would have to be a closed circuit, which we can already extend accordingly without hampering the functionality, which we shouldn't. Unfortunate configuration. So, can it hurt if I connect these? I don't think so. Because then what happens is what happens already. I mean, there is already connection. I need to make a gas canister thingy. Pipe utilities. Gas utilities. So, this thing will take its air basically directly from the room. Therefore, this doesn't make sense. The active vent will be here. This will actually go upwards and release it directly into the room. So we need a pipe cowl. I will make another one because I don't want to destroy the current configuration. Cowls are evil. So the waste gas of this one goes into the into the use gas, what the fucking term should be, of that. Um, condensation. I would assume that is pollutant. Let's clean the air. Huh? And 
and I have to fill this with enough pressure. I can actually use the active vent for that, but no, I shouldn't, because then what's in there would be impure. I should instead turn this whole thing off, suck it dry, connect. I can already connect right now. <clears throat> and then just use the canister with pure oxygen. I'm not sure what just happened. Possibly nothing. Maybe it was unrelated. Still some stuff on me that could just smelt. can use this connection to make that happen. Removing this pipe then afterwards should uh, push everything back into that pipe, increasing the pressure, but harmlessly so. Do I have pure oxygen at my disposal? Yes, I do. But I don't want to waste a whole bottle on this. Oh, why am I still breathing this? Anti-critical. Rather a half one. <clears throat> is it pure oxygen? Yes, it is. How, how close are we to, to turning this on? It is powered. Can I make the transition? I think so. Oh, what's happening here? What is the problem? Oh, the problem is possibly that since I couldn't... Yeah, 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 no, I realize. Of course, I'm pumping in with that vent as it comes out here. That must cease. I need more steel pipes. Do I not have any more steel pipes? Uh, of course, insulated pipes. Well, I'm looking forward to the work that Rocketworks is doing on this in the next months because they will deal with the survival loop and this probably will imply that some of the plateauing that we're experiencing, which will rather pull us to start a new playthrough and then struggle with all of this stuff and never really enjoy the fruits of our labor, like having infinite resources in here and always a full stack of pipes in the locker, um, will actually come to pass because we will later also still have a tickle to keep playing this. And this might be very, very close. I mean, only a few... I mean, it could be that uh, tomorrow the mood variable, which is already in the game, uh, will be affecting some things, which will motivate you to wear the spacesuit less, so you would have to build more on that uh, up front. Motivate as in it is so far supposed to only have uh, positive side effects. And when you don't wear, wear it for 10 minutes, then um, you will have um, achieved Nirvana. No, then the, the mood will be restored. Okay, that is a closed loop, and it should have been evacuated. It has, so we can do this now. Hunger critical. Do we have enough cables? 15, should be enough, yep. Cable that up first. For no reason. <sighs> I 
Man, I'm still in the mode in survival mode here. Still after all this time. Admittedly, I could have done it better. But okay. What counts is the experience. At least for me. One megapascal is sufficient, uh, particularly since this will increase in pressure when it gets hot, and we will see too that it gets hot. This has been opened, this has been closed, I think we're done, let's see. This has been turned off because there was an error. Temperature 165, now it's increasing because this medium one has been has, is kicking in again. And this one too, and this one too. And the room temperature, what is happening to it? 17.1, 17, 16.9, 17, 0.8, 0 0.7. So what's happening over here, where it counts as in, is this a delusion or is this really sinking? It's really sinking. In other words, yes, we have achieved sufficient cooling for now. Let's see how that works during the day. Next step, hydroponics. We didn't have the iron for that, now we do. So we can finally start with that fucking shit. Peaks. Hi. 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 Hi to you too. There it is. I wasn't wrong. It was somehow buried. Oh yes, and a stacker I want to make. Now this is insanity. Because you can be sure that the behavior will not change. It's not that buggy. Actually, this game is really... And if you look at all the th features therein, oh <coughs> all the things that they have to keep, keep in balance, all the, the simulation depth, the multi-threading, I mean, it was from the start developed with multi-threading so that they keep a performance high. And that makes things very complicated, depending on how much these threads interact. <coughs> um, oh, right, I was talking about... Um, uh, atmospherics and shooter games well if you just have this pressure and heat thing going on per cell and you have an extra uh, thread that just uh, does the simulation basically not burdening the system in the slightest you know then why not do that you know and then you can um, then you can uh, in another thread whether the actual action is going on when you're shooting whether your health is developing and so forth you can say okay room temperature is this and this that let's cause that as a harder display and also make some vignette or something which is missing from this game still um to give you the experience that is really fucking hot and you know stuff like that multi-threading <clears throat> and they did that with multi-threading in mind and so this game uh is really so complex that whatever bugs there are, uh, I mean, if you compare that to the amount of features, this is possibly one of the most bug-free games in existence. And the developers are just kick-ass, you know? You know how often we, we talk uh, with the CEO in the forums on a daily basis? That happens, happens even on a Sunday and a, sa a Saturday and a Sunday. The CEO is just dealing you know, with this stupid source book of dude. You have no clue what you're fucking talking about, so shut up, please, thank you. You fanboy. I can only repeat what I said before, uh, but you can imagine the inside yourself, because I'm tired. What am I gonna, did I want to make? I don't remember. A tray. How many? One. Ah, let's change the channel, it's a bit annoying. Yep. And I need to dread or ink again. And they will always refill. Because now we're buying our water in bulk. 13 liters, okay, I guess we need to buy some water again then. And for that we need to make money. Making money is actually one of the, of the focus, the things we need to focus on. Because 305 is not that much. So I should be trading more. Uh, but honestly, I am losing track here.
not you. You, come here. Uh, wait, are these insulated? No, it's just normal, normal ones. I believe that just like normal ones, they are, are just three in a bundle. While, I mean, it's what it looks like, that's the graphics. It's a bit dumb that it's not actually the case, because it would be nice if everything that you see would be everything that you get, you know, to stick with the truthfulness concept of the game, where every door that you see is a door. Okay, there's water in here. And we have temperature. And so now we can plant some shit. So we can some make some oxygen. And while we're at it, let's also make some plants. Since we're not so desperate to make uh, food, I mean. <laughs> Since we're not so desperate, on that front I will not risk all of them. But only one. After today's experience, you know. What? Oh right, only one. <coughs> Driving. 17 degrees. Ah, oh, I still need to eat a Burger King. Huh. Not getting warmer yet. Is the air purified? Yep. <sighs> okay, oxygen production is beginning. We need to mine a shit ton more. Oh, oh, wait. I can harvest one harmlessly, but uh, let's not even start with that. Hmm. <clears throat> Okay, uh, how, f how are we looking survivability-wise? We need more water, so trading is an issue. Let's, let's do some more trading to make some money and possibly to buy some more water. Let's say every trade henceforth... No, that, I can't say that. The opportunities. It's a matter of opportunity. Mm. Should be net positive, is what I wanted to say. Appliances? Not interested. Anyone else? Nebula necessities. Necessities sounds like it might be one of the cheap ones who has stuff that gets you going and thus might also have stuff that you can sell and is still in contact range. Or it, you know, as robots. No chance. So later then. Some more wind turbines would be nice. Jetpack low. Actually, I want to make a computer. I don't feel comfortable with not having some code with which I can control reality. And actually, you know what? Uh, some of those who are more technically, technically inclined, do you not also hate it that all these lamps that we can buy, these smart lamps, which you can get for like seven or eight euros or dollars on Amazon which have a multicolor spectrum and Wi-Fi built in and so forth don't you also hate it that to access them we have to do this OAuth 2 shit and everything why can't I just access the things that are on my personal Wi-Fi in a way that is easy for me why does it always have to be this complicated shit for safety reasons no 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 it can be made to work in a simple way and still be safe I know that OAuth and such just uh, give you more more features. Or, well, maybe also more security, but s s some security is enough for me. Spe uh, particularly if it's in my, in my home network. I want to control my home with Java, you know? Just program that stuff. That's probably possible, but dude, the length through which I have to go until I get the first thing switched off and on, and then the only alternative currently is to use if this and that, uh, you know, if, did, if TTT uh, website or whatever, where you have two free and then you have to pay 10 euros a month or whatever, not for me, no thanks. 
Then I have Google Home standing around here listening to everything I say. Hey Google. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah, educate me. Try to be above me, you piece of dog shit. What? It's, it was still talking? <laughs> I won't even bother. Uh, bup, bup, uh, where do I want to go? Put up some chip and housing stuffs for some general control of the station TM. Did I put them in the locker? Or they're still running or uh, lying around on the ground? <coughs> <coughs> they are still. Video check. Hard disk space. 36 gigabytes space. Didn't we have 60 a while ago? Four and a half, almost five hours. But why the fuck? I keep going. Let's see what happens. Um, but let's make some more space. Um, 15 gigabytes. Did I upload episode three? I think so. It's still private. Oh. Yeah, right, I didn't get to the chaptering. That's the most annoying part. I have to watch it again. You watch it, I play. <laughs> but it's up there. So hypothetically, I can delete this. It's gone. 50 gigabytes. Um, do we have three connections? Only two? Oh, I thought it was three. Now we need a computer, a stationary one, because the station is. I love this pro composter. I love this uh, computer programming stuff in here. Because you can control your reality with it, and that's astronaut stuff, really. Iron, gold, copper. Because, you know... What an astronaut does when they are not in the process of dying, which they're usually not, um, they are surviving because the machines are doing what they're supposed to, and what they're supposed to is being told to them by space-hardened computers, which don't have the performance of your smartphone, but your smartphone wouldn't survive in space. I guess. Do we not have iron again? Dude! Well, I know, I made a lot of steel, but this is... I need nerves of steel here. I need to go mine for iron again. Ah. Copper. And then we need the IC board. Logic. I see editor motherboard. Where will we put the computer? Would be nice to put it right next to here, but now there's no space. Yeah, over here then. That's a nice space. I hope they work on the on the on the dark shadows, you know? When it's bright, the shadows should not be that dark when it's overall bright. They don't have to have true global, global illumination in here, where rays of light are bouncing against stuff and stuff again, <coughs> which then lighten this up, but some kind of brightening needs to take place. Because that's what, what would happen in reality here. And no, you don't need an atmosphere for that to happen. Just light needs to bounce off. You know? The atmosphere of course has an additional hazy effect, but that's that's something else. Because running around with the flashlight on all the time, it's so annoying. 
Yes, I can install some lights. That makes it easier and better. I'm not that not there yet, though. Temperature, 22 degrees. If I could turn off all of this on and off with one switch. Ironically, now that I have this thing, I will not do so, but I would install a switch, which turns... Wait, can I do that? No, not ironically. I can use this to switch all of these. The controller will be a physical switch. How about that, then? Processing. That's exactly what I mean. Air conditioner. Oh right, the air conditioner also has a housing. Hmm. Wait. Why do we have one air conditioner here? Is it the only one I connected to logic? Right. <laughs> the others are not visible in the logic network. So this is basically the primary unit, yes? Hmm. I wonder. Wonder, wonder, wonder. Should use this physical switch then? But I can't use it to turn that off because it turns off the processing so it cannot detect that it is off and thus. Ah, shit. I see housing. I see. Let's just do this. Uh, oh no, I see housing because the I see is still a different thing. I see housing. Misc. Now we have 50 watts additional use of electricity. I will now tell all arc furnaces to turn on whenever they can. By means of doing that. Define burn structure arc furnace. Ah, great. I did that in the air conditioner. Oh, no, I didn't. I just did it in, in the editor. What I select here. Uh, export to whatever it is. The logic circuit of the arc furnace might not be connected after our little fire disaster. And that, I think, I should also automate. Should we do the, the hard suit thing? You know, the automation of that? Logic is connected. So I did it wrong. Hmm. Ooh. Why though? Must be again once again one stupid mistake. Define CS arc hash structure arc furnace start yield. Write batch to all of these that they shall. Oh, on? <laughs> of course. Again, a stupid mistake, of course. 
and it works. So we can get rid of these 20 watts. And we just put up 50, but I mean it's like two lines of code, so we can so do so many things with that. Oh, I could put up a switch here to turn all of this crap on and off. Mm. Maybe right next to this one. There's no room for cables. I need a logic writer switch. Does it actually work? I can write into a thing and then that thing's value will be changed. Of course I could use the housing and just read the setting from there, but it seems like a waste to use that one majorly important debugging variable for that. So can I detect the state of the switch? Let's see. Force write reference on. Read and write. I only have to connect this logically, that's all. On this side or on that side? Doesn't matter, same side. Wait, oh, it needs power? Maybe it only needs power to write. I will just connect the logic and see what happens. I love programming. It's the best. Give it a name. Control A, Control C. I'm not sure about this. <laughs> hash, 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 hash. Okay. And I don't know the rest. Logic writer switch. Structure logic writer switch. Huh. I could actually have extrapolated that. It would have worked. So now I want to read the value of that thing. Load batch name. CLS, oh my god. Dude. And of course, where do I want to read it? Into register R0. Logic type on. Is it on? Is it uh, batch mode? I don't care. And then right into the housing that value. Export. Did I export? Uh, where am I? It's a bit jungly in here. Once I have lights up, this will be easier. This can't work because this thing doesn't have an arrow. Uh, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't have power. Okay, here's the, here's the board. State zero. State zero. Okay, so that thing apparently needs to be powered to even know whether it's switched. Which begs the question, do we need this thing? Kit button, let's use that instead, huh? Uh, and that would be... Which one will we use? This one? I can see immediately whether that thing is on or off, so I don't need a lever that tells me... I will use this one. Structure logic switch to them. And I think on is not the vari variable we're looking for. Setting is what we're looking for.
and of course we need to make one and then it goes again oh I have to go mining <sighs> ah, I guess who's annoying me again No. Hit button? What's its name again? <clears throat> Kit logic switch. Well, that's what it is then, the logic switch. Why do I always have my helmet closed? It's ridiculous. Okay, before we produce something with some production machine... Yeah, some volatile, some, at some planet atmosphere is actually leaking into my suit. Bad. What name did I give? <laughs> yeah, maybe the housing should rather have been over here. That makes more sense. And it could debug more easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's move it over here. That's ridiculous, man. <clears throat> Edit. Switch AC system. Copy. Apply. Um, I didn't do anything. Currently, we are on IC MISC. Now, if I remove that, it should immediately automatically vanish from that list. For some reason, it doesn't. Oh, maybe I just caused the um, bug of sorts. But it's vanished. It triggered, I mean. It didn't cause a bug. It only caused a bug by programming it wrong or whatever. More appropriate. always good to explicitly switch to the device if you're in a potentially uncertain situation because you don't know what's going to happen because there might be bugs I mean in here and everywhere in life okay housing state 0 housing state 1 alright so now we need to turn all of these guys on and off simultaneously. I could use batch writing for that in case we only need one AC in this, I mean one AC system. And I guess we can assume that this is indeed so. So let's look at the air conditioner. What is its name? I am confused. Here we go. Structure air conditioner. Hmm. How straightforward. <laughs> Structure air condition. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, that, but also this thing has to be turned on and off, respectively. Where is the labeler? Ah, shit.
Ah, damn, I tossed it somewhere. Not this time. Mode 1. Zero is the default mode, which is harmless to you, it doesn't suck the room dry, so you're suddenly suffocating. Mode 1, the non-default mode, <coughs> is the one that uh, does that, and that's what we want. We want to pump the room into the AC. Why is this one not turning on? Oh, because this logic is not connected. And this is quite annoying. <laughs> we could put some uh, overpressure thing there. Too bad all the overpressure things that you can have in the game are all of electrical nature. So... Um, damn. It's fuckly. Dude, I have a problem. And we need more cables in the end. Room temperature, 27 degrees. Is something happening? Point five. Point four. Yeah, it's currently day. Ah, still working. Okay. So now we have a switch for our entire AC system. Makes it less tedious. Nice. Now, how about this then? We could also use one for this thing. Too bad it's still out in the open and fugly, you know? <clears throat> The switch, I believe, doesn't have power. Switch. Base power usage, zero watts. They explicitly say that here. So we can have another one over here that turns this thing on and off in case we need air purification. Let's do that then. Power low. Until the next station fire wipes it all out, huh? Dude, I didn't use up our cables. I'm pretty sure I didn't. Or did I? I did not. That would be the AC having achieved its... Oh, what, what does it mean? I don't know what it means. Ow! 
Why is this thing not on? Um, okay, let's see if we can do that also with logic. Of course we can. <coughs> Too bad, I have to change something here before Enter will actually do the search. That's a bug that's everywhere in the game and for some reason they don't get around to fixing it. I object to that because things that are so fun fundamental to the experience on all fronts they should be tackled, particularly if they're not too complex. Because whenever I click in here, you can just pretend as if I changed something, if that is really the problem. We get everything here. Mode. What's the mode? Idle, active. Hmm. Let's write the mode idle to all of... No, let's write the mode active to all of these and see if I can do something with my hand then still. Currently I can do this. Hmm, why not the third back, yeah. That doesn't work. Idle is yet another variable. What variable is it then? Open? That's for the thing that you can open with the with the uh, chip. Which currently doesn't work. Setting. That's the temperature. On is read write. I think that's what it is. No, that's obviously not what it is. What am I thinking? How can you turn that on, man? Okay, let's turn that off then. Let's see if turning the mode to zero will make an audible difference in case... What? I end up writing to these things, right? Are they still cooling then? Maybe not, but they're making the sound as if they do. Why is this one stopped? Did I do that? Ah, damn, what am I doing? This is the wrong mode. Here is the mode. Mode 0. Incident 1. Conver confirm. Export. I set them to idle, didn't I? But nothing's happening. Crap, I don't understand these things. It's getting warmer? To that I can only say wrong. But it is getting warmer. And yeah, the ACs are a fickle beast. I'm not sure I'm too happy with the implementation. What am I doing? Mode 1? Is it busy or idle? 
one is active. Let's change that to zero again. I, sorry, this is a, an annoying part, annoying part of this. More annoying than what I did before. I'm not sure. <laughs> Twenty-eight point nine. I don't know what's happening. I don't think I broke them with logic. I think it's rather the sun being up. But didn't we experience that differently before? Yeah, let's just leave them running. See what happens. So new switch. I didn't make a logic processor, therefore. Aha, the next one. Let's rather prepare instead of running into that. This thing should now have been turned off. Oh, damn, the wrong switch. Ah. Control this with its own chip, but I already have that one, so.
underwhelming. Temperature is still 29 degrees. That man, why did I put this shit off? Is it cooling or not? the day you know it lingered in the pipes I guess temperature wise <clears throat> um, but what's going on with this thing why doesn't this work must be a naming issue Scr scrubbers scrub up vent switch is uh, scrubber switch Scrubber vent. Scrubber filtration. Structure filtration. What's happening? <sighs> Some stupid mistake, of course. Oh. Really? No, not that stupid. I exported this to the air conditioner? Why is this thing now on the air conditioner? That's stupid, man. Let's first go to the IC housing and export. Okay. Then, so in this case, I would say it was kind of a bug. Import from the air conditioner. Export to this one. Export to this one, fastest way to delete source code. So it worked from the get go. Yeah, apart from this. Temperature 22, yeah! Okay, it's working. So let's see if we get some jetpack going. And then we can go uh, mining again, I guess. Though, I'm thinking about eventually shutting this down now. Has been quite long enough for today. And quite unbelievable. I have no clue what happened there, but, you know. Words that the world should hear, I guess. And so it made me say that. I didn't say those words, the world did. We AC so of course sucks a lot of electricity. But energy wise we're kind of equipped as long as it's this balanced. <clears throat> Plants. Oh yeah, how are we doing? Driving towards fruiting. Potato thriving towards giving me something to eat. And seeds. Oxytone. It's unbelievable how much iron I need. not have 
If I would get a trader now, I wouldn't even know what to give them. I can't even manufacture anything. This is shameful. And I can't even make the uh, pneumatic mining drill now. <laughs> because that probably also takes some iron, right? Copper, steel, solder. Oh! Game changer. Ah, uh, no, that's over here, I think. Dap di da, di dap di da, di dap di dap di da. What's the oxygen doing? 69%. Mm -hmm. Pressure is a bit low. Temperature is 12 degrees. I should pump in some more of the CO2 stuffs. And this too should actually be one switch. Sun coming up. Let's not make it too hot. Well, I need to make jetpack fuel and I need something for this drill. Nice coincidence. <coughs> because we can do both with the same machine. Which one will we use? This one. But how? Too bad, now we have this mining drill but we can't really use it because we don't have iron to make this utilities thing which will allow us to fill a bottle and also we have no jetpack. This is fucked up. In other words, let's go out there and get a little bit of iron. Dude, nickel we do find enough here, but no iron. That's because I dug it away already. Basically that's confirmation bias in a way. <laughs> you only see what you want to see in the things that you see. Otherwise you, you order them in your head according to your whim.
quite a sad life. And we do we do pity people whose eyes don't work or whose eyesight does not work, right? Why don't we pity people whose mind does not work and is blind? That is possibly possibly even worse. You're going to hell. You know, uh, regarding the fear of hell, because that is something that a person can have, there's uh, a way to get out of that, and that is the following. You have to realize how simple the concept of hell is. It, the concept is, what is the one thing that nobody wants to experience because it's the worst possible experience. Well, it's an experience that's completely unpleasant or r rather torturous and it's an, um, it is one that never ever 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 ends. Like for eternity. That's the most uh, intense one. The most, th that's the one thing that you definitely don't want. And then they're trying to tell you, yeah, believe this crap else you will suffer, 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 suffer forever. But it's not my doing, oh, it's a god, it's just saying, telling, giving you the good news, I'm trying to save you. Dude, if you fall for that shit, you deserve to have fear of hell and your life destroyed by religion. But don't affect anyone else. I mean, it's the, the dumbest concept to come up with. It's so simple, I mean, it was probably reinvented or rather, it was, it's, it's rather popular, isn't it? I mean, the idea. Um, therefore, um, re how often can you reinvent an idea that is popular that you already know? But if someone wouldn't know it, I bet you it was invented about 10,000 times um, per year in the recent 2,000 years. If the people wouldn't have heard of the concept in the first place. Because it's so, so, so very simple. So, I mean, since that is so simple, uh, you cannot let your life be controlled by that. Then your mind's just, I don't know, half dead or whatever. Where's the station? Ah, oh, there. 270. Olo Tomasi. Jetpack critical. Jetpack low. Pick one. Jetpack low. Jetpack low. Jetpack critical. Jetpack low. Power low. Jetpack critical.
ね。When did we have the storm the last time? It must have been a long time ago. I can't remember. Hunger, caution. 17 degrees in here. Even though the sun's going down. But still, I think it was 15 or so when the day began. Driving towards seating. We actually have two potatoes already. Nice. <laughs> Some more plant pots, maybe? What did I need the iron for? Hmm, I'm kind of losing focus here. I think I should, uh, yeah, could also do the soup programming, maybe? Maybe it's not so hard to do, I'm not sure. Would, of course, have to switch out the chip. Or I, huh, hmm, hmm, tricky. I guess I need a laptop for that. The laptop is a tire 2 thing. I can, of course, put it in the housing here. Hmm. Okay, I feel kind of um, we should uh, take a break here and stop this. And so I will now save the game and commit suicide. Beep. Pop. Decreasing. 
temperature actually also decreasing because the AC is in the middle. That's hilarious. But soon it should catch up to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And here we go. Alone out here on this planet. Temperature high. No one here to help me. I have to do it all myself. And I'm dying. That's peculiar. Cognition low. Whatever. Cognition critical. See ya. Maybe after this ridiculous video.